fun to have. Oh. I had my phone in my pocket too. Oh my god, I called you. I know, I saw the call. I didn't even, I was walking the door as I saw the call because of the rain. You really, um, you went long this morning, huh? Longs. Long. What time do you wake up? Ten. Oh, buddy, is I, that standard? No, I, I'm filming now. I'm waking up at like oh. five or six. But well, you didn't I, shoot on Sunday. No, I didn't. Yeah, so I, I stayed up a little bit. I, I was editing. You I treated was, yourself. I treated myself. I finished Love on the Spectrum. Okay. Well, we will need is a little bit of water. Oh, you want to go up here? Oh, is there a room for you have an a floor that accommodate? Right here. Okay. Is that gonna fit? If not, floor it is. I was kind of thinking, does this mess up? I know you're pretty. Put it on the floor, it's fine. It's but what about this? Lost. What about this? That would make him reach over and make another cup if I desire. To be honest with you, I much prefer the floor. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I cannot believe I don't own that. Yeah, I had it since since I was in eighth grade. And I just, oh. had, them, I just had them on my pod. No, you didn't. I'll talk to you about it in a little bit. How, you bastard. I was trying to get him and I couldn't get him. Yeah, man. You don't and do, I'm friends with him. You don't do video. Oh, and he wanted to do video? I don't know if that's the reason. <laughs> By the way, I've never used this unit before, so this is great. This is a trial run. Do we want you want me to wash it then real quick? No. The this is where we differ. This is the hillbilly and me versus the so I don't Jewish, get Arnold. neurotic Jewish person in you. Arnold would want to clean. No, he wouldn't. Arnold would drink urine pass through here. Oh, hey. Okay. <laughs> Tell him I said so. I can't believe that bastard did your podcast in that mind. Um, well, you know what I tell myself in those situations when someone won't do it, my feelings are hurt? This is how I like, what would you say? I comfort myself by saying this. Well, he, was, he knows that we get pretty deep and emotional, and he probably was afraid I'd bring up some touchy stuff that he just didn't want to talk about while promoting his book. That wasn't it. Okay. No chance. Okay. He knows how to set, if anybody knows how to set boundaries, you think Arnold doesn't? But well, he, he does, and he does it in the most interesting way. Is he actually doesn't set a boundary. He just makes it positive and, turn, and changes the subject and, and turns it into a question he would like to have answered. As a politician would. Um, but you know what he is more than a politician? Huh. A babe. He's useful. Yeah. That's Be Useful, Seven Tools for Life with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Why don't we cut to a clip? Scoop doo. Blabbity blue. Scoop dee. I think there'll be a palpable energy in the room, and I think we need to address it. So we did record perhaps the greatest intro of all time of any podcast ever. And then I had brought my own Keurig, a mini Keurig that I brought in this bag, because it was um, a Christmas gift, and I was very excited to use it. A little travel pouch. Shout out to Christmas, by the way. Plugged it in over here. This will drive you nuts. Let me put this it's back on the ground. No, 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 no. That was part of the original thing. See, it's happening organically. So about... Um, 10 minutes into this ordeal, we're talking about Schwarzenegger. I'm hurt that he did your show. That's olive oil. <laughs> Is that going to be a problem? <laughs> My coffee starts brewing and it causes the circuit breaker to pop. My initial thought is we're in the middle of what they're calling a hurricane. I refute that, but we have a big storm outside. And I oh, thought, I oh my God, the, the electricity of the entire neighborhood's gone. And now me driving over here was a waste. But then I found out, oh, it's just the circuit breaker. So I immediately shifted gears. Okay, well, it's not, we can salvage this whole thing. But then you, you hit the skins. And that's what we're trying now to, to dig ourselves out of the hole a little bit. But this is great. Now we have an opportunity for something real to happen, which is you're quite tore up right now. And we could work through it real time. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, you're going off to the bathroom. <laughs> well, I just heard you violently throwing up. <laughs> I broke a sweat, so I was checking. I take my hat off and I'm going to drive there. Let me you. So anyways, olive oil just freaked you out a little bit too because you're already high strung. No, I, it, 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 it offered some curiosity. Because mm, mm-hmm. it looked like there was a disc of something in there. Yeah, and there is, there was. A disc of olive oil. A translucent disc. Have you ever tried olive oil in your coffee? I think so. You think so? I think I've tried olive oil. People are throwing olive oil on everything these days. Yeah. Cakes. And they, they, there's an acronym for it, and I never understand it when I see it in the comments. Oh, I know what it is. Uh, uh, e, uh, EVO. EVO. Extra virgin olive oil. Yeah, but I don't, my mind doesn't go to extra virgin yeah, before not with, olive not, oil. Not with your career. 
We'll be right back. <laughs> Let's not be right back. I think we should probably motor through, given what happened the first time. You, Because also what happened for the viewer and the listener, you had paused the show so we could have a real moment. Mm -hmm. You could let me in on a little bit of a secret. And honestly, the second you said, what did you say? I said, we'll be, let's, uh, let's come back now. Yeah, and you said, well, we're back. And it went, yeah, like Are you, what's going on, man? I've just really been thinking a lot about Sunday, April 7th. What about it? It's gonna be my first time in San Francisco. Ever? Ever. Where? And you're doing a show? Uh, while I'm there, I figured I'll hit up the Cobb's Comedy Club. I love Cobb. Sunday, April 7th, 7 p.m. Ticket link in the description. Iconic venue. We'll see you there. Well, Rick will see you there. Yeah. And if you like puns and corny jokes, then what will you like better than a little corny on the Cobb's Comedy Club? April 7th, 7 p.m. Ticket link in the description. I thought you wanted to sell tickets. Okay, well, uh, we're going to edit that out. No, we, we won't. I'll edit it out on my version. <laughs> Rick's version. <laughs> That's a good name for your next for your podcast. <laughs> Experience the magic of Magic Mind. America's fastest growing energy shot. I'm ready to experience the magic, but is it true I can get 20% off? Magic.com? Oh my God, dude. You're so fucking high. <laughs> get 20% off Magic Mind at magicmind.com slash Tyso and use promo code Tyso20. That's 20% off by going to magicmind.com slash Tyso and using promo code Tyso20. If you only have a, four, a 401k, stop one more time. Okay. If you only have well, a four. We got to snap. Three, two. <clears throat> If you only have a 401k, you're not getting the most for your retirement. Add an IRA and boost it by 3% with Robinhood. And if you transfer in any retirement account, you get 3% on top of that. There's no limit to the match. Robinhood Gold gets you the biggest contribution match of any IRA. Sign up for Robinhood Gold at Robinhood.com slash boost by April 30th. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Investing involves risk. 3% match requires gold for one year from first match. Must keep IRA for five years. Match on transfer is subject to additional terms and conditions. Robinhood Financial, LLC. Member SPIC. And Darth. And we're back. <laughs> did you have that made or did that? Yeah, clearly T-Y-S-O. Yeah. Um, you know, Dax, Dax? Dex, it's Dex, crazy how logically I know everything that's happening in my body and my mind right now. I know that the camera shut off. You walked in. It was four minutes. There was nothing. There was nothing. It was just some fun. Some, just some. It would have been a fun cold open pre music. Nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little BTS. Uh, EV BTS. But I is that an extra virgin? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this guy now <laughs> but like it something like happened in my brain into my body like i'm drunk and i i know everything's fine i'm just fucking listen we know we know physiologically from fmris what actually happened you were living in your frontal lobe in your neocortex where you do all of your executive thinking and modeling of the future and then that event literally cortisol? hijacked your brain and then you're in your amygdala fear loss all this stuff. And you can't think from that part of your brain. And then you have to, that's why breathing, that's all I'll tell you to do, box breathing. It'll bring you out of the amygdala back into the frontal lobe. That's literally what just happened physically while we were here. I thought the amygdala was in the front by the, uh, by the, uh, whatever, where the, the prolactin lobe? comes. Yeah. Because I heard this thing, and you know better than me, yeah. but I heard this thing where. I just said, yeah, as if I. I assume I do. <laughs> you know more than me. I do. Uh, <laughs> where it, it's where your fight, flight, freeze uh, thing is. Posture right? submit. Yeah. So I get there's something in the lobe where like when that happens, it opens up mm. and that's where flipping your lid comes from. I remember a therapist told me that once. They. Did you love that? Do you want to hold oh, on to that? Boy. <laughs> Such a dad. Has that been powerful? Do you like believing in this, these things? <laughs> <laughs> because we could go to a church. There's nothing mechanically happens in your brain, right? There's no, there's no garage doors or anything. There's no flipping of anything. Maybe not in yours, dude. <laughs> my, right, not, you have if mechanisms. You, look the side, you can see my forehead is like this. It's like the, yeah, eighteen hundreds uh, sketch of the inside of your brain yeah. with a movie camera. And a... <sighs> okay. Anyways, we were talking about a guest that you had that angers me greatly that you would have had, given the fact that I had begged to have this guest. And I'm friends with this guest. Wait a minute. I may have had him on my podcast and you didn't. But how did you become friends with him? 
Um, Tom Arnold, in a nutshell. Oh, for the audio only listeners, we're talking about Roseanne Barr. Go on. <laughs> Tom Arnold. Ooh, there's a quick sidebar. What percentage of your audience watches on YouTube versus listens? Depends on the episode, but almost every episode more on YouTube than audio. To what factor? Like, it's, is it 80% it of the- It really depends. Uh, I would say on an average, and I'm making this number up, 30% audio. Right. Okay. That would be my, I threw out 80. I would definitely want to watch yours more than listen to it because you've got so much business going on. A lot of business. You do a lot of um, digital stuff. Um, and I don't know if it's just in the headphones, but what I'm thinking about now is I'm so, are we going to hear this rain? I hope. There's nothing more soothing than rain. I do go to sleep to rain sounds, even when it's raining outside. <laughs> you do? Yeah, because it's raining outside, I'd have to open the window. You prefer the synthetic version. I would prefer <laughs> if the window were open to hear it loud enough. Uh -huh. But I don't have the window open because I'm just scared about my window open because my I, my neighbors are so close that I could hear everything. Yes. It would wake me up. Some of your neighbors who I just, I just met. I met two of them because oh, you, you gave me your address and you, you withheld the apartment number. So in my mind, when I walked up, I was like, well, I know he's on the street because I this was your old apartment where you did have a balcony on right. the street or is that balcony on the street no it's not no but your old place was yes so i was like oh duh it's the first one because that has a balcony on the street knock 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 oh you knocked on their door yeah and then a lovely woman answered and and it wasn't you and she <laughs> and, said and, can i take a picture she didn't we're not there yet and then i was like oh my gosh i'm so sorry i'm at the wrong apartment and she's like okay then now I start texting you. Now I'm getting angry. And I think my text to you was like, what a fucking time to ghost. Because you were so dialed in. My whole ride over, we were communicating all morning. All of a sudden, now I'm in the rain outside of your apartment and I can't get a hold of you. 10 minutes goes by. So I'm texting. Buddy, let's look at from your text to, to my call. I bet you it's no more than three minutes. Let's see. You text me. What apartment number? 1116 AM. Oh, that's the first text. 11, yep. 16. 11, look, and I called 11, 19. Do we have the same data? Oh, that's your missed, that's my missed, that's your missed call. Yeah, I called you first. It, let's just say I was a little agitated. Well, we know what's happening, So right? then, what? You were. <laughs> the amygdala was firing, <laughs> it took charge. Yes, uh -huh. it took the steering wheel. So then I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to be out here for a while. I got to find an awning, which I did. So now I'm standing under an awning on someone's porch. No knocking. I've given up on that approach. And then all of a sudden the door opens. I'm like, oh, fuck. Now I'm just, now I'm just, I didn't even knock. Now I'm just standing on this person's porch. And luckily that guy did know who I was. He said he was quite excited. He's a video game programmer. Do you know him? He's up there in the corner. And then he said he and his wife listened to the podcast. Not yours, but mine. Did you say whose? <laughs> did you say, do you mean mine or somebody else's? I arrogantly assumed he was referring to mine. And then, because he said like, his wife. I listened wife. to Trevor Noah's podcast. He said his wife. That was a clue for me, a context clue. So then he was very, very excited. And I could tell he was going to be too kind to say. And I said, would you like to get a picture to show your wife? And he goes, oh my God, if she knew you were on the porch. So then we did some pictures. I have longer arms, so I had to do it, but I'm not very good at it. Then I shut his phone off on one of the attempts. Then I had to fire it back up. And then we got it. And then you called. <laughs> so that had all happened before I got into this apartment. That's, um, but I think I, Will you give me credit? I, I I got back in that frontal pretty quick. By the time I went in your bathroom, I went in your bathroom, I had to pee. I noticed that you cover your plunger with with um, a shopping bag, right? That was of great interest to me immediately. And then I was thinking, I feel very vulnerable that guests come to our home, but at least they go up into the attic, right? It's uh -huh. not like our personal living space. Like when you use the bathroom in the attic, you're not learning anything about me. And I was like, there's so much about Ricky in this bathroom. I've lived here three years. Mm -hmm. I have not one time taken a poop down there. Not down once. here. Not once. Why not? Because so my old place, I had one bathroom uh -huh. and I didn't like people coming over because I didn't want them in my bathroom. You're right. They'd be using your person. Using, and so every time someone used my bathroom, I would like clean my bathroom. Right. And you're afraid they'd see your lithium and your lidocaine. I don't even want to make a joke. Uh, okay. I don't even want to make a joke about it. No, <laughs> okay. because this is a big deal for me, this bathroom. Right. Because when I was finding a new place, for obvious reasons, you want to have multiple bathrooms. Sure. But I thought I need a guest bathroom. Mm -hmm. I need a guest bathroom. You need some privacy. I need a bathroom that that I, I, I always have access to a bathroom and I, I'll clean it when I want to. I don't need to worry about anybody else's poops and pees. It's just for you. So with that... 
I don't, I look at that as like, that's like an easement of my place. I don't, I don't own that bathroom. That's just a thing. That's a public bathroom. You go in there, you do whatever you need. Mm -hmm. I'll wash, I'll wash the towels. Have you had a guest dump in there? Oh yeah. You have? Oh yeah. You say like, oh yeah, like there's multiple. I encourage it. Well, I do too, but no one's ever taken me up on it. Mind you, we don't have a door in our bathroom, but we do step outside while they go. Even a pee? Yeah. Unless they say it's fine, you can stay. Which it happens. Mila Kunis, I applaud her. Uh, she went. Then do it. And we'll be right back. If you're looking for just the right flooring, you need choices. And at Marshall Carpet One, you'll certainly find them. Am I allowed to say that or only you? You could say it. Okay. I had Jake Johnson on recently. It's very pop- Oh, what a guest. He's incredible. I love him so much. And uh, he didn't really know the podcast. He didn't know the podcast format at all. So I did one little thing and he goes, he just like, I saw him. Are there things? Are there things to play? Yes. And yes, for yes. the first half hour, edit that. We're flying in here. Snap your fingers. Wow. You have to tell me what's going to happen. You know what I did? <laughs> How about any double oh, talk? Oh, oh, stop, stop. <laughs> oh. Really? Ooh. Oh, no. Is oh, there going to be a special effect shit. on that? Like yeah, you stopped and my eye popped out. Yeah. Oh, come on, oh, dude. dude. Come, come on, on dude. Focus. This is going to be fun for the audience. Are you going to help pay for this? Oh, my oh. God. <laughs> Jesus Christ. How about this? If I go like this. Yeah, uh, you're, gra- sh- yeah you're, grabbing a, you're grabbing one big boob. Not comfortable it's, with that. You uh, got edit it. Edit that out. It's a big boob. Edit that out. It's already in. <laughs> Boys, I hear you have a podcast. <laughs> yes. It's really exciting. Two big boobs. <laughs> it's really exciting. Edit that out. By the way, we're done now. It's just too much. There's stuff in your hand right now. What is that? Oh, that's Spider-Man poops. Rick! I thought we were gonna get through this without some of that. Right, Bars that- and tone. Let me you check you. That was a great. Uh, that was a great one. Let's do another one, even bigger energy and action. <laughs> that hurts my throat. <laughs> and he's uh-huh. just doing this nonstop. Bring this through. Uh huh. Uh huh. Man, is he fun? Drop this. Slide this down. Oh, he's wonderful. There's a handful of these guests. I think you deal with them more than I do because you have so many comedians on, and I, my ratio of comedians is small. Would you say that I have more comedians on, and you have more princes on? I would say my guess is yes. Okay. Would you I say you're eighty percent princess. I haven't tracked how many princes you've had, um, but comedians you can just sit down and they're gonna let it rip, and it's a party, and there's you really don't need to research. I mean, it'd be fine if you did, and you had some, you know, some touchstones along the way you're trying to go to, but it's so fun. And Jake, for me, I think he's done it twice now. I just look so forward to him being on because I'm like, oh, right. I don't need, I just need to sit down and say hello. And then two hours will rip by and it'll be great. A conversation versus an interview. You yes. do interviews. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And both are good. And I think actually it's even lovely that they pop up occasionally because it's kind of a palate cleanser. Like last week was Fargo week, right? So it was um, Juno Temple and John Hamm and Noah Hawley. You didn't have Lamorne on. I had already had him on. I love him. Um, very easy interview. Um, but, but that's obviously a heavy week. And then today was Heidi Klum and it's just frivolous and fun and flirty. And I'm like, oh, that's, that's a lovely little palate cleanser from last week, which was all about domestic abuse. Right. You know, is, is a research for Fargo week watching Fargo or is it looking up John Hamm's background? It's all of it. Yes. It all started with, I love season five. Have you seen it? Is that's the new one? Yeah. Just the pilot so far, or the first episode so far. I just started it. Isn't it? That pilot's fucking nuts. Yeah, it's good. The gas station sequence. The whole show. The, the whole, everyone is talking about that show and the, uh, the uh, what's the one? True Detective. Oh, that one's good? I don't love watching shows that, let me say it a different way. I love- Let's do a commercial because it's going to take you a while to think about it. I got this. it. Oh, you got it. Okay. Um, do you watch Reacher? No. Okay. It's not going to win many awards, I don't think. Okay. I love that. Sure. Okay. Sure. He's so big. Yeah. Okay. I love muscle men. Back to Arnold, my, my yeah. king. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's, I, it's, it's, I need it's, it. It's it's primitive. It's biological. We can't resist. I can't. And if it do, if a show doesn't have gulp, gulp, it, gulp, gulp, gulp. I don't know. I can't, it takes me so long to get into it. <laughs> if it doesn't have like magic stuff, like swords and dragons and you shit. need sci-fi supernatural or, or muscles and but, ideally both or 
I'll have to just fight through it. Okay. Like, I've rewatched, I'm about to again, I've rewatched uh, uh, The Sopranos four times now. Yeah. Doesn't have any of that. But I, but. Yeah, there's no real muscly guys. But there's a lot of violence and there's a lot of bravado and there's a lot of. It's the muscles. When I was watching oh, Reacher yeah. recently and I'm like, why do I want to watch? I like, I'm enjoying it because it's it's action. It's easy. Yeah. But I, I was I was like, because season two, I finished season one and season two wasn't done out. So I wanted to wait yeah. however many weeks for season two to be ready. And I'm like, why am I like jonesing for it? Yeah. And it was really like, I want to see the muscles. Me too. Yeah. I'll, I'll start watching it because of that. Um, I love muscles so much. Mm -hmm. I love muscles. I once had a, um, not to recommend an episode for you, but I did have Kumail and um, Rob McElhenney on, and it was called The Body Episode. And all we did is talk about how much we uh, love uh, men's bodies. Uh, you're talking about- uh, Armchair expert. Yeah, I know. But I'm saying f when when he got big for uh, Sonny? Uh, well, luckily, yes. Well, Rob had gotten in, in inordinately great shape for an episode of Sonny, just a single episode, which I think is hysterical. Well, it was One the first episode of the season, right? He, he, no, it was the end. So you don't even know why he's so jacked all season. It's like, why is he so jacked? Was that the dance season? And there's a dance, and I, I think that. the last episode, he has this beautiful yeah. ballet dance, which what a, I love it. Uh -huh. All that work for like a three minute dance. And then Kumail had also gotten jacked for the Marvel universe. Yeah. So independently we have been on, we're all talking about how much we love money, men, men's bodies, male bodies. And then I thought, well, we should just do a full male bodies episode. And then we all got together after those individual episodes. And what talk about bodies? Yeah, Are you, yeah. You're I still could I could talk about it for six hours. How much I love and every male body I remember loving. Um, I have a, like a hierarchy, as I'm sure you do. Let me hear it. If I had to go number one body of all time, it's Rodman Circa Bulls. When he would have his shirt off, he was so lean, but the shoulders were like there. Yeah, you've always so liked shoulders. You've commented when I was in good shape before. You've commented on my delts. I think it's everything. Yeah, the shoulders yeah. are everything, <laughs> and to have that girthy of shoulders yet be that lean is very impressive. I think obviously people often reference Brad Pitt in Fight Club as they mm -hmm. should, but what you're really looking at, what people are responding to, and they don't even know, is abs. his shoulders. Well, oh. abs too, but a lot of people have abs. He has inordinately defined in big shoulders for how thin he is in that movie because he's like 130 in that movie he's so lean but the shoulders are still powerful how tall is he i think he's five two have 11. you had him on i haven't had him on you tried yeah he doesn't do it does he do any podcast yeah he did mark maron you would have to cut this right now <laughs> i mean you don't, would, don't you say could, you could, then don't answer me okay great, 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 great. yeah but Back to shoulders. Gulp, 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 gulp. I have a Brad Pitt what is story. The bod, what is the body part for you that you're honing in on and is of particular interest? Um, I want to make sure that, and we'll get to it later, but okay. I want to, so if I forget, you remember this. A couple of things I want to get to. Per We're both good at this. Potentially my Brad Pitt story, okay. which I don't think I've ever told on here. I may have, but I know I did once and I cut it. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I want to talk about uh, using the bathroom when a guest is around. Okay, yeah. Um, and there was another one I don't remember. Um I grew up with Arnold posters on my wall. Yeah. That to me was what a superhero is. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah it was yeah. Superman. I was obsessed with Superman as a kid. Yeah. And then the cape, the boots all over the place. Right. Then I saw him. So what movie was it? What movie was Arnold's? The, the one you saw that turned you on to Arnold. Oh, probably T2. Okay. Which then sense. turned me on to Terminator. Right. And then uh, everything. Uh, I, I love... I feel lucky about this. I'm I don't normally feel lucky I'm older than you, but I'm older than you. So I saw Conan Barbarian at a at a drive-in at like seven years old. And he was bigger at the beginning of his career, if you mm -hmm. remember. Yeah, I, I mean I've seen all those. Too. Oh, you have? Yeah, I, but I, my introduction was Terminator 2, I right. think. Mine was him with the yoke yeah. twisting the fuck, whatever that thing I don't was. Remember a the movie mill. very well. And he's like 265. Uh -huh. He is, it's impossible. Yeah, he's massive. Like what I was seeing was impossible. And what I like about, it's not a superhero. He doesn't have magic powers. He is just that big, uh -huh. which was unimaginable at that age. Is that not, because that to me is what it is now. Like when I look at LeBron's body, yeah, which to me is what I think a perfect athletic body is. He, that's he, him for you. Um, but it doesn't. More than Rodman. You know, it's, um, I've actually, uh, uh, Felt felt both of them. You've touched both of them. Yeah. Yeah. My, my dad was friends with, I don't know if you know basketball enough, Bill Ambeer. 
What a oh yeah, I'm so sorry. Question. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Maybe we've talked about this. You're from Detroit, yeah. obviously. Annie lived on my dad's lake, and I used to watch him now, fish. I would park the pontoon and just watch him fish. Right. I yeah. fished with Lambier a bit. You did uh, a couple times. Yeah. Does he owned a trucking company down in Ohio? Why? No, why did it you? was boxes. He had boxes. Oh yeah, he did shipping. But but my dad was in the hotel business a little bit with his dad and some partners when my dad was younger. Okay. And Bill was drafted with the Cavs. Okay. So my dad had organized something somehow because he's a huge sports fan yeah. to say, hey, between the practice, because at the time practice, it was further away. Yeah. Why don't you guys, everyone come here. I don't understand it well enough, but he got the calves. But he bamboozled them all. He figured a way to get the calves, <laughs> to his... bust the calves to the whatever. Okay. Uh, and he just became <laughs> friends with Bill for some reason. Sure, that makes so sense. So when Bill went to the Pistons, he was friends with Bill. So he would go there a lot. He was... Um, he, my dad has this told me this story where he because he would travel with them sometimes he would be there for practice uh -huh. and there's a time he was there and they were all shooting foul shots and the press was there and chuck daly comes out everyone but glassman has to go no and all the press people left my dad kept to do foul shots with them okay. there's some cool stories that my dad has told all me about glassman but i didn't know much about basketball then i was young but i do remember a couple of times being in the locker room and I used to call Rick Mahorn the man with the big boobies because I remember you would hold me and he had these huge packs. Huge packs, yeah. Um, Mahorn was big. Vinny, the microwave Johnson, he was inordinately jacked. But Rodman, who was then the worm. Yes. He wasn't big yet. He oh was yeah, pretty, you said the bulls. Yeah. It's, he, put on, he put on like 20 pounds of muscle mass between pistons and bulls. LeBron... Um, I know I've talked about this to you before already, but I got to play in high school. So I've touched them both is why I said that. I don't know that I knew you played against oh, LeBron so in footage. high school. <laughs> yeah. Um, Hold on a second. I'm trying to picture your body next to his on a basketball court. And it's got to look really silly. He was. he Because he's the same size then, right? I was just going to say, yeah, he was, he was basically the same, the same size. I have it, but I'll put it up here. Um, Minimally text me the photo of yeah, you two in the same frame. Um, Did it look like Gulliver's Travels? No, he just looked, I mean, he, I just look like I'm 17 yeah. and he looks like he's 30. Right, yeah. But that. <laughs> Were you guarding? Uh, you the, weren't guarding him. No, I, got, uh, uh, I, I went to box him out once. Um, which I don't know if I boxed him out, but I do know that I was in position on him, but he would have just been able to he, he just, you know, grab it. Over was he it. playing power forward in high school or center? He played everything. He played, he, played, yeah, he, he was brought, just him. Yeah, it was him versus, versus five, versus five of us and four people from his school. It was one on nine. <laughs> oh no, he played, he brought the ball up the court and he also played down low. He did everything. <laughs> right. Um, I would have loved to have seen him play in high school cause it, it must've been preposterous. So when we played, uh, uh, the first we played him two years. Uh, his tenth and eleventh, my eleventh and twelfth. Okay, and you're all a year older than LeBron James. Uh, a grade above, but we're about the same age. Okay, um, that feels weird, doesn't it? Uh, I'm I graduated at seventeen. Yeah, it just feels weird that you're the same age as LeBron. Yeah, and also when everyone's <laughs> looking at him and talking about like how old he is and how great he is at being so old, and I'm <laughs> yeah. and I'm like, wait a minute, I, I, yeah. I don't keep in the same shape as him. Yeah. Um. But yeah, we played him the first year we played him. I had heard about him because people were talking about him. But he, he was in 10th grade outside of sports world. People didn't know who this 10th grader was. Yeah. And we're playing this guy because we were really good. And I'm like, because we had guys on our team that were really good. These Chones triplets. And then uh, I just remember there was one play at the beginning where he passed the ball and it went a different way. And it went like almost half the court. Oh, my God. And it was a trick pass. Um. Uh, or I'm remembering it different, but yeah, yeah, yeah. he obviously did something. I, I don't know. I was, yeah, you know, yeah. And you fell for the, uh, the fake I, out. No, I was watching. I wasn't even oh, in. Oh, okay, okay. I just saw it and I was, and the, it was a fucking bullet. Yeah. yeah. And I just remember like, <laughs> who is this guy? And then he just was just, yeah. he would go up and to dunk with elbows at the rim and then just drop it in, you know, like not <laughs> Gently. doing it. Yeah. Like he's playing with oh, his sons. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> um, but all this said is to say, I look at LeBron's body and I go, this is a, perfect specimen yeah but it doesn't turn me on the, the, way the same arnold. way yeah and i don't even get turned on by arnold in the same way anymore and i don't know if i need to validate what i mean by turn on but it literally does it's not sexual i don't think but it literally does like i need to look at it yeah i want to talk about it the, i think the same phenomena exists gulp, gulp, gulp. in pornography which is like I'm not gay. I don't desire to be with a man, but 
But I also like looking at a huge dick in porn. I will only look at a huge yes, dick. Yes. And I, why? I don't know why yeah, that yeah. would matter to me, but there is something like uh, equine about it. Or something horse about like it? equine. Like there's some horse. horse oh, is that a driven of like equestrian? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> there's something primal about it. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. Like I'm saying, I don't, I don't desire. What about when you see a little penis? Does it gross you out? No defense. I don't want, not let's say gross out because it's yeah, yeah, that's does it, do, do you look at it and do you go like, I can't watch this little fucking dick. Well, it just, it, you know what it is and it's quite transparent. It leaves the fantasy realm. So it's like, I, my, my fantasy isn't like I'm plowing a girl with three inches of semi hard <laughs> dong. My, my fantasy is like, I'm i uh, I'm a Clydesdale. Right. Right. So it's fantasy. I think it's fantasy. And then sense. you just go like, this isn't what I signed up for. Because when I see those muscles, I do want them. Yes. So but you the don't want them to squeeze you and caress you. No, I'm you. saying like, I want you to personally be, want them. I want just to like be you want shape. the big veiny dong in the, well, that's in the easy. pornography. The big yeah. veiny dong is easy. <laughs> sure. But back to Arnold, I will say this about him. And I think this was our conclusion on the bodies episode, which is for us, He's the he is the the backstop. He's the final right evolution of the bodybuilder. Everything beyond him, size wise, to me got less appealing. Yeah, because it's it seems synthetic. It just like some, the the proportions got in a way where it's just like now it's just a big uh, rock. It's a big boulder. It's yeah. like it's kind of just a big round mass of muscle. Whereas he's still he was like I think he took it as far as you could take it naturally or relatively <laughs> not naturally you know just, well, yeah. when i see people and i don't want to say names but i'm thinking of some names okay but we'll bleep it like okay sure. and like it's so it looks like an anime drawing it's it's every muscle has muscles it just looks like there was <laughs> you put too much stuff in yeah like a geek drew it yeah yeah um also <laughs> they got shorter so it's like that's what's crazy is like you're seeing guys that weighed more than Arnold and they're seven inches shorter. Like Kai, that black dude with the yeah, long ponytail, yeah, yeah. I don't know his weight off the top of my head, but it's more than Arnold weighed, and he is like five five or something. He is short. So the whole thing changed, and I think he's the last of the great bodybuilders. You're with the, tons of respect to all the others. You're you're uh strong but you seem like to have a like that's what i want to be again i want to i don't want to be arnold size right right so i had a period i guess that started in big. covid where I, I mentally was like i want to be a big boy huh. i've been a medium boy my whole life and i actually want to see what it feels like to march around at 220 through the world and i put a lot of effort into that and i did i got up to like 220 and that was fun. It truly was fun. Like you could feel the dynamic between you and other men. That, what are you gonna do? I want to fill this up, but I, I lost you. Me. Okay, not at all. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, you're just like I'm just gonna go lip. grab a five minute nap. But um, <laughs> I mean, you <laughs> are getting you're leaving. That was pretty rude. Of yeah, me, you're huh? just like you're leaving in the middle of this ramp up, and you're like, oh, I'm just getting tea. But anyways, go get tea because yeah, I'm fine. Get tea. Okay. I'm listening. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm not gonna fucking do it with I you. Know, I know. So this episode is sponsored by Magic Mind. I am of right mind. My father and my cousin Teddy are stoned out of their minds. Now, I have taken Magic Mind and I use Magic Mind and I really like it. Dad, I want to introduce you to Magic Mind. I am have an open mind and I'm willing to try. <laughs> it's, it's a beautiful mind. Dad, when I take Magic Mind... It makes me feel a little bit more alert. It doesn't make me feel caffeinated. It doesn't make me feel anxious. Let me ask you, Ricky. Do you come? Do you crash? No, there isn't. There absolutely none. Well, that's important. It's clean energy without the crash or jitters. Say goodbye to excessive caffeine. So here, this is interesting. They promise to only use the world's best suppliers. They require rigorous testing on every ingredient sent to them from every production run. They readily provide certificates of analysis on the ingredients to anyone who requests them. Every bottle is inspected. Do they test them, Rick? They test every batch of magic mind in a third party lab ready to experience the magic get 20 percent off at magicmind.com slash tyso and use code tyso 20 that's 20 percent off by going to magicmind.com slash 20 and using the promo code tyso 20 
Do you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? I know that Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on that 3%. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA and a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost subscription fee apply and now for some legal info claim as a quarter one 2024 validated by radius global market research investing involves risk including loss limitations apply to iras and 401ks three percent match requires robin gold for one year from date of first three percent match must keep robin ira for five years the three percent matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions robin hood ira available in the, to the u.s customers in good standing robin hood financial llc member of sipc is a registered broker dealer hello is uh is uh, this is a whole conversation is about bodies. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm not done. I, I still <laughs> I need to make a few more points before I feel like everyone knows where I, I sit on this topic. So I did, I did a few years at like 215, 220. And it was a really fun experiment. Like I would want it for you because something bizarre starts happening between men. Like when you're interacting with men, they're treating you differently. Men who are also big or just men in general? All men, all men. Either if they're big boys too, they're kind of like, yeah, this guy's a big boy too. I'm not gonna be able to just run ruck shot out. You know, there, there's like a respect. So then you're getting the big boys like respect. And then you're getting the medium boys are like, oh, this, this is a big boy. You know, it's, it's, it's palpable. I loved it. It was so fun. It's such a fun experience. Were they looking at you certain way? You can imagine this, right? It's just like- The closest thing I can imagine Well, is they're commenting nonstop on it, right? It's like, you can tell they can't stop thinking about it. Like, oh my God, you're- I was on Kimmel. I remember the first time I was Kimmel, he can't get through the interviews. Like, what have you, how much muscle have you put on? Right. You know, he's that just kind of- good, huh? I loved it. it Why'd was you stop? So, it was so fun. Well, I can, I can tell you there was an exact moment. So I was having so much fun with it. Mind you, my face was looking worse and worse and worse. Because you're putting on weight in your face. Yeah, I was just like, I, I, I had eye bags and I was puffy all the time. What were, what were you doing for this? Was it just food? What were you taking? Lifting heavy, eating a ton. I'm on tea, but I've always been on tea. Testosterone. I know. Um, that's it. That's it? I was like just pounding and lifting heavy. <clears throat> and I feel like you talk about everything. So that that's all you were doing. Yeah, yeah. No, I wasn't on like- And were you eating more than you wanted to eat for the calories? Yeah, yeah. So it felt like you were working Yeah, and day. eating like four chicken breasts, which I would never do. So an insane amount of protein and everything. Just, I was, and I didn't care what I, I just was like pound it in and then go out into the garage and squat as heavy as you can. So, and, oh, and I changed the exercises I did. That was really key. I started doing way more deadlifts and squats. Are you close enough to this? Yeah, I, I believe so. you know how to use these things, right? I talk so loud. I'm sure it's golden. Bring check, it closer. Check. So I'm eating and bring I'm- closer. Okay, bring it closer. Right. Even closer. Even closer. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, um, Okay, so I had a few years with with that, and it was fun. Then I had Nicholas Holtz on. Nicholas Holtz. Nicholas Holtz. I know Nicholas Holtz. But- Holt. It's not Holtz, but I had an S to everything. So I'm from I'm Michigan. looking who that is. Nicholas Holt from um um um. He's the the gray, British guy. The great. Yeah. He's British. He was also he was the boy in about a boy. Yeah. He's in everything. X Men. Thriving career. Yeah. He was a guest, and I was looking at him, and I'm like. That's a great body. He looks just like an <laughs> athlete, right? We're the same size and same frame. That's the thing. Being and I'm too looking big, at him. Athletic. And I actually, this was the precise thought <laughs> I have. Women like this a lot more. Mm-hmm. Boys and men like this. And I've had three years of boys liking how I looked, which was fun. But I'm like, women like this. It's I'm gonna go. I'm gonna return to medium boy status. Being in a. Uh, uh, a monogamous marriage. Yeah. What is more important to you? Guys thinking you look cool or girls thinking you look good? This is funny because Monica and I were just having this debate. Would you rather be a good boy, a cool guy, or a sexy man? What's a good boy? Me? Uh, I wouldn't put you in a good boy category. Good boy is like really generous, really thoughtful. <laughs> oh, maybe maybe golden, golden retriever energy, I think the kids are saying now. Um, sexy man, we know what that is. And cool guy, we know what that is. I'm none of them then. Well, hold on. You have to be one. You are one of the three. And the question was, what would I want to be? So what I would say is what I want to be is sexy guy. Because I want every woman to like Mm -hmm. me. 
But I know that men don't like sexy guy. And I also want men to like me. So I have decided I want cool guy because women will be attracted to cool and men like cool. They're not threatened by cool. They're it's sexy. They hate. So that's where I landed. <laughs> Who came up with these like three categories? This? It started very organically because we were just Jimmy Kimmel had helped us to get a guest. Um, really, really helped us. And I really wanted the what guest he, to complete nice this. He, we just said he's the ultimate good boy. We got to give him a good boy trophy. He's so generous and thoughtful. He always sends presents on your birthday. He's a ultimate good boy. But weirdly, he's also a sexy man and a cool guy. So he kind of fucked up the category, which then led to this longer debate. But another example of um, a good boy would be um, Tony Hale. Mm -hmm. What a good boy. Like, great actor, kind. I, I like good boys. In fact, I mostly want to be surrounded by good boys. I'm not throwing shade on good boys. It's just for me, what, I, what, what I'd what i want to be is, in truth, I'd want to be a sexy guy. Oh, cool, cool guy. I want to be a sexy man, but I've settled for cool guy, hoping to catch as many fish as I can. Right. Back to your monogamy question. I definitely want girls still to be super hot for me just because mm -hmm. I'm married and monogamous. It right. would be my hope that every girl is attracted to Sure. Me. Don't you have that desire? Yeah. Yeah. But I also, yeah. Yeah. And I'm getting older. You know, I'm transitioning. I have, I'm gray now. That's curious. Have you not been gray for a bit? Not like this. Like it's come on hard in the last year and a half. It's like my sides yeah. are just deep gray. So then you start realizing like, oh, there's a time clock to all this. I'm not going to be able to pull off any of these categories for much longer. Yeah, so hot Pretty guy soon is I'm like just going to be like, like cool grandpa will be my option. Well, you could be cool guy at an older age. Cool guy is yeah. director. Yep. You're right. You're right. Um, Who's the chef that yells at everyone? He's a cool guy. Uh, with an R. Something with an R. Ricky. Ricky. Ricky Glassman. Uh, <laughs> chef, uh, chef. Chef R. People. You know I watch. Talking. Sometimes I can watch people watching this saying what it is. Yeah. yeah. He's British. <laughs> this never works. I always do this. Chef who yells at everybody. That might work. That might come up. I love the guy too. I've watched one of his shows where he goes into restaurants that are failing. He tells them Chef to get their, who yells at everybody. Tells them to get their shit together. Ramsey. Gordon Ramsey. Yeah. That's right. He's a cool guy. Big time. And he's got to be mid 50s. I always wanted to be a hot guy. Yeah. And there were moments in my life where like I saw pictures of me, for example, not in real life, but like I saw a picture or yeah. I had a day. Yeah. Or I was like, I think the analogy would be like, I'm in the shower and I'm singing something for whatever reason th in this key at this time in my yeah, life with your hair damp. Uh, I'm saying it's like, uh, can I, I could sing. Yes. Yes. Right. Yes, of course. No, no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I've had moments where I, I've had enough moments where I'm like, Oh, I could, I could be hot. Uh -huh. It never happened. Right. And I think we would both agree. Like I'm, I have deep gratitude. Like girls have liked me throughout my life. So I'm well, like, I, I'm not an incel. Um, but, I do believe, or at least my story about myself is that primarily they liked me because I talked to them a lot and I made them laugh. And I also was willing to dance in junior high and no one else was. I don't think I've ever been walking down the street and a girl was like, oh. I think, I think about like, that all the time. That's no one's, I, like, no one's, you're not, we're not turning heads. No. And then of course you want what you don't have. So I'm saying, I'm very grateful. There's definitely a guy at home going, well, fuck you. Fuck you. And that guy's right to say that. That guy to was me. also like, and it's Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> You should have known that right away. There's only one G Rams. So I, I, I selfishly, yeah, I want to be walking down the street just once in my life. And some gal's like, Whoa. well, that happens with a body now. Like when you're like when you're wearing a shirt like that in the arms show, like mm. if you can you have mean a, a standard T-shirt, you're yeah, acting like I'm, I have like a weightlifter shirt. On. That's this, a, this is it's, a, a it's a good it's a it, it, the shirt fits you well. OK, great. All right. I'll, I'm not putting on the shirt. I'll put it on you. But the shirt <laughs> okay, also okay. like. That, that shirt's but when you say a shirt like that, it's that just shirt, a that shirt costs sixty dollars minimum, for sure. Velvet by Graham and something, right? Expensive. So, so it's a nice shirt. Gold, gold, gold. So bodies could turn heads a little bit. That's the only thing that's in our control, and that is why I became obsessed with my body because I'm like, I can't do anything about this unless I'm willing to get some radical surgery. And obviously, it's too late for me because I've been on TV too long, and everyone would know. The only option for me to get the thing, like I can't have Brad Pitt's face, but I could have his body if I tried hard enough.
That's true. Well, I'm going to need to talk to you later because I don't want to get into it too much now. That was a perfect segue into your Brad Pitt story. Well, I'm going to need to talk to you later about uh, whatever celebrity access things you have with doctors or surgeons or whatever. Yeah. Um, I have been uh, going through, I've had surgeries and going through PT and stuff for years at this point, shoulder and elbow for years at this point. And I'm I'm just, I work out and I'm able to work out for a month. And then I got tennis elbow here. I don't know if you've had that. And it's for people that haven't, it sounds like a nothing. It's three months of like, you're out. Yeah. And now I just got it here. Yeah. A year later. And I just like, let me, I don't need to get into what you are into. I just want to get back to where I could wear a Mm t-shirt and people are like, Oh, Rick is in Rick's in good shape. Yeah, Rick is athletic. That's the dream, right? That's it's what just, I want. Yes. Um, I'm not gonna say it because it'll sound like I'm dismissing your pain, and I'm not at all. But Fight you but through. you should watch Lane Norton. You do you follow Bio Lane on, on Instagram? You should. He's a scientist. He goes through all of the studies. He doesn't like reference B-I-O? one fucking mouse study. B I O L A N E. Bio L A Y N E. Yeah. He's the best. He'll call out Huberman for being wrong. Oh, I've seen this guy Huberman, all the time. Yes, Huberman He's, has apologized. Like this is the, in my opinion, he might be the only person you can trust in this space. Have you had him on? I have had him on, yeah. As a, just a fan of his and followed right. him. I'll and I, there's nothing I like more than him taking down whatever the current diet craze is or whatever the current, but he has a lot to say about injuries and pain that is really fascinating and worth considering. And he is an, uh, he is a world record power lift champion all natural has never done any exogenous hormones ever. He's clean as it gets, and he is a powerlifting champion. And he's had some fucking injuries, like yeah. way more than your eyes. Yeah, injuries. but is he Jewish? <laughs> really? I asking. don't. I didn't see his penis. There's yeah. There's something you can't tell from a penis. I know. Believe you me, think you I'm think I was Jewish. Arnold. I know. Uh, um, so disrespectful. <laughs> also, you don't have a big penis. No, I have a big penis, but it's circumcised. Good. Yeah. You have a big penis. Your hands. I know from your hands. You have a Thank good you. size penis. I'll send you a video of me with LeBron and then me with uh, okay. another Well, it'd be best that, you know. <laughs> so uh, I, I really think there is something to Jewish joints. Okay. That makes it a little bit harder. Look, Jewish people do um, over-index with certain things. Uh, Tay-Sachs. There's, it's an insular population Tay-Sachs? of people. Tay-Sachs disease. Tay-Tay. Yeah, it's a genetic disorder that. Primarily, mostly only Jewish people have. Um, there's, what are you doing this about? Just letting them know, like the Jews have special things. Oh, <laughs> even if it's like a hereditary. Yeah, well, you know, it's special. Recessive, double recessive. Um, but, uh, okay, there might be something. I, I doubt it. Uh, Does he live in LA? No, he lives in Florida, which makes him more trustworthy. <laughs> Don't you think? I want somebody to, like... Be, like I want to give somebody, I want you to give somebody money for me, to where they follow me around for a month uh-huh. and just say, because I I'm figuring out the diet already. I've I've been like doing. It, by the way, it's 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 ninety percent of the equation. Well, I need the other ten percent of saying yeah. it's okay. Fight through that. Don't fight through this. Do a yeah. little bit of this because. Here, here's an interesting one that he pointed out when I interviewed him, which is they did a a random study of people that they just gave back MRIs to. Like they took 10,000 people or whatever the number was. It was a lot, it was a big study. They took 10,000 people, they gave them all MRIs on their back. And it turns out that 40% of all of us have have ruptured discs. Now, they're not in pain. These are people that didn't have back issues. Right. But now if you have back pain, and you go into the doctor and you get an MRI, they're going to see this ruptured disc and they go, oh, here's the problem. But what's interesting about that is there's a 40% chance that they're going to, that anyone they give an MRI to has that. So there's a lot of spurious conclusions. There's a lot of, we see something and we assume that's the source of something when in fact, you know, almost half of us already have that, but we're not in pain. Nobody sees anything. I've gone to... Oh, Nobody, I've when, gone to all of the people. I'm dealing with that. It's funny I asked about your shoulder because right now I'm dealing with something that it has crossed my mind. Like, is this worth getting an MRI on from volleyball, two different games where it's like in the morning when I lift my arm up like this, it's like excruciating. But I lifted this morning. I'm just going to keep fucking lifting through it. Yeah. All right. And I've had other stuff like that. And it it, it, it passed. A lot of it's, you know, I don't know. It, he, You're not going to listen to me, but I would encourage you to listen to him. And just hear what he has to say about pain. It's it's interesting. Yeah, I will. And there's a whole science of pain and people who really study it. I, I 
I have had people on that have had surgeries and stuff where I like at like introduce me to your doctors. I've yeah. talked with so many people and physical therapists and and people that have worked on all the people. Yeah, you were getting PRP and you're doing more all than this. that. I, 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 I was talking to, I, I mean, I, I know his doctor. Right. In fact, I'm, the first time I met him was while I was getting an MRI in their office and he came down in his gown and he said hello to me like he was doing me a favor. And really? I, 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 I remember seeing the, on anybody else, it would be arrogance. Right. Because he walked by. But but, but, any, but on him, it would be false humility. Right. It'd be so, offensive. Correct. Yes. I don't know if I'd be offended, but I understand the hyperbole I'm there. I'm offended be, when like someone like Brad Pitt acts like they're surprised you know who they are. I'm like, I'm not stupid. I, I right. almost, it triggers like, let's think, you're treating me like I'm in third grade. It's not like he came up to my door and asked if I would take a picture with him. Ding, ding, ding. Speaking of Jewish folks, I just heard the greatest quote ever from my therapist that was, Apparently, the, one of the female prime ministers of Israel some years back, her quote that he saw was, don't be humble, you're not that great. <laughs> Which is like, that's an awesome sentence. Don't be humble, you're not that great. So in, in a certain way, like for, for Schwarzenegger to pretend you're not having an enormous reaction by seeing him in real life, which is the reality. It is the anatomical reality of Earth in that moment. Uh -huh. For him to look at you and deny that that's at happening, that it's, it's, it's mildly, it's placating and pandering. Uh, I think a fair analogy would be like if somebody comes up to you as they're a fan and then you say, what's their name? Or they say your name and then you say back, I'm Dax. But they know that, but it's still an introduction. So do you do that? Well, what I... And I wouldn't do that in that situation because they just said they know me. Right. But I definitely, when I hand, hold my hand out to someone, even if I see them smiling in that way that clues me in that they might know who I am, I go, hi, I'm Dax. Because I've also had people shake my hand who weren't Arnold Schwarzenegger and didn't say their name. And I, and I was embarrassed for them. Because you it just thought, happened with a chef the other night. Some chef you thought he knew that you knew his this name. This person assumed I knew who right. they were and didn't bother saying their name when I said, "Hi, I'm Dax." I had a and that's silly. But there, there is a category of folks that, that that don't need to do that, and Schwarzenegger is certainly among them. The Rock is in there. Uh, no, not everyone knows him as Dwayne, though. <laughs> okay. So I had a conversation with my friend yesterday about uh, this. Uh, we uh, went we went to a friend's place, uh -huh. and there's. Uh, 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 it's a husband and wife, and okay. I know the wife. I know the husband now, but I'm friends with the wife, and yeah. I've met the husband a couple of times. I know his name, but when you know somebody's name, I'm not like I'm 99% sure. But that one sure. percent is like, if I don't have to say his name, I won't. Why take the risk? Why take the risk? Yes. So I said, I think I'm almost positive it's this, but he's like, oh, I'll just introduce myself. I said. I've watched people introduce themselves to him and he says, nice to meet you and smiles and never says his name. And he goes, that can't be right. He did it. He introduced himself. The guy didn't say his name. Yeah. So then my friend said, it's blank, right? And he goes, yes. I'm like, I thought so. However, I asked my friend yesterday because this guy isn't a famous guy. Right. So I said, why will he not say his name? My only thoughts are, it's one of two reasons. Okay. One, um, he, uh, uh, isn't thinking about it like he it doesn't matter he's not he's absent-minded it doesn't matter moment. yeah or the only uh, uh i mean oh, i guess three it could be he thinks you know it but why would he right okay. um or he feels that maybe you don't want to know his name is there some type of subconscious insecurity the 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 his partner is a then little he'll bit more say famous it'll be forgotten anyway so why even go through this charade yes but it's okay. happened so many times. I've watched it because I wasn't sure the name at first. Yeah. And I was like being around when the, I was intentionally when he was meeting people and they he wouldn't say his name. Okay. What's more fascinating to me about this story is this is one of our deep, deep similarities, which is my biggest preoccupation in life is trying to figure out intentions of people. <laughs> and it's interesting because I think you do it for one reason. I do it for another reason. But I spend more well, time know your doing this right here, what you just did, than I do doing anything else. Where it's like, okay, either, right, he's absent-minded, that happens. Um, he's like, what, why waste everyone's time? No one's ever going to remember my name. They remember my wife's name. Okay, that's one thing. And then maybe another one's like some arrogance. And then I go, uh, I'm going to vote on number two. I think I vote on number two I think at number two, and I think Which it's makes me like him more, too. My favorite. Because I feel sad that that's what his assumption is. And I want to go, Glenn, people know your name. And I'll go, it's Brian. <laughs> <laughs> it is Brian. It's the guy's name. No way.
Hey. No. Oh. Um, <laughs> Uh, other than I just got Glassman bopped. <laughs> other than being in the pocket in bits on podcasting, yeah. my favorite thing is when something happens between me and my guest, uh, and or something had happened that was unaddressed, and we get to before we resolve it, we get to I could say here's what I deduced, here's what I th I'm almost positive about, and here's what I'm missing. Yeah, and they could say oh, but this is this, and figuring out those things. I love it too. I live for it. It is my hobby, and. I am aware that other people don't do it to the level you and I do. Because I will say to Kristen, like, so you notice that blah, blah, blah. Yep, she noticed that. And I go, do you think it's blank or blank or blank? And she'll be like, I, I don't know. Like, who cares? You know, like, this doesn't, who cares? Okay, Which is a, legit. I have a juicy follow-up for this, so I'm okay. going to interrupt. Okay, great. I have found out, I think, <laughs> that I'm going to wait. Let me do the chip shoot. Um, I, I think... I remember what I was talking about, I think. Yes, yeah, so we were talking about trying to figure out people's intentions. But more so about you talking about it with Kristen. Oh, and yeah. Like she's not into it. Or right. not like you, at least. Yeah. And I think I've come to the realization recently that it's so important for me to be able to... I could obviously think about that stuff whenever I want. But like to express it and to like ask my partner or a friend or whatever. Yeah. They don't have to do it the same way I do. Right. But I have discovered that I, I, I'm trying to say stuff that like I also, without specifics. Right. I, as a human, we have to feel seen. Yeah, sure. I feel. Or understood is really important. Yeah. yeah. I, there, and many times those are synonymous um, to me because understanding doesn't mean a, a, an agreeance. It just means like. Oh, I believe that you see this this way because this is the way you are. Right. Um, yeah. So I guess that's what I'm talking about, yeah, whatever yeah, yeah. one that is. Yeah. And when I am trying to deduce things because there's either not enough information externally or if it's with the person in front of me, they aren't in touch enough with the thing. Right. And I'm not wanting to therapize, but like I need to understand why I don't have enough information. Mm -hmm. And if I... If like when Kristen, you were saying it's this, this or this. And she goes, I don't know. That's very low stakes. But if it's something in the relationship. Yeah. And you're like, all right, we have to figure this thing out. Yeah. And then she would be like, hey, I don't know. It doesn't matter. Oh, go ahead. If it doesn't matter to her, which I believe yeah. that's okay. But it, I feel so shut down. If like it does matter. To you. It matters to me so much. Yeah. I don't want to have to drain everything about it. Yeah. And I don't want to have to give you too much homework. Yeah. But but there are this is one of those moments where I'm gonna say, hey, I need a little help here. Yeah. I need a you're doing me a favor and I'll take it as a favor. Yeah. I we need I'm we asking for a kindness right now and some patience. Yeah. 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 Well, look, we're a lot, uh -huh. but I think we're rewarding a lot. So yeah, I think there's a downside to it, certainly for me. Yeah. If Kristen does something annoy that annoys me, my instinct is to try to figure out what led to that. Um, Kristen's much more just if I do something annoying, it's like that was annoying, and then she moves on. And it is it's probably pa patterns. It's though. probably laborious for her yes. and others in your life. Yes. That I need that kind of level of understanding. Now I'm assuming yours to me makes sense in that you're autistic. So you're like, you're rubbing people the wrong way, but you don't even know why. And you're learning that I, things I, you do. I, I want to, I get what you're saying, but because this is so much more global and we're talking about something in particular, it's not just me. It's not even that I'm, it's not necessarily that I'm rubbing somebody the wrong way. Okay. Are you sure? That, that happens. Yeah, but it's but it's not. But it's, I would. I mean, I'm to me. You saying that, by that, wanting I, the to reason, understand that that one that one to me. Sure, there's other ones I think, but that one is the most because it could be you rubbing me the wrong way and me wanting to understand. Great, but the core safety that we all need to feel, I think that one is the one that gets prioritized and has set you on a mission of that. I think you potentially being excommunicated. We are a social primate. So to be excommunicated, to be 
people misunderstanding you and you misunderstanding people. And then the, 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 the cost of that is that you're excommunicated. That on, the, like on a primal level for us spells no access to food, no access to mates, nothing, debt. Like it's not a frivolous concern that we would be kicked out of our social group or a group or be unappealing for people to be around. It's life or death. It's, it's, it's more important than food, water, and shelter because that's the thing that gets you food, water, and shelter. So it's really, really primitive and important that you know if you are about to get excommunicated because right. you're missing something. Yeah, fair. And mine is, is similarly rooted in safety, which is many of the adults that blew through my childhood were highly unpredictable, be yeah. it from addiction or whatever reason. So I feel safest if I think I understand what motivates people mm -hmm and what their intentions are and what may set them off and what I could do to mitigate that. Like, so, and, and now obviously that's not my life anymore, but it was the, it, it, it was the foundry in which I was forged and it's permanent. So I can't be calm unless I think I have a good sense of what makes you tick and how you're processing the world. It's just too scary. I, I don't, then I won't be, a, I can't even guess what you're going to do next. Now, where for me, I've loved this is I don't do it. I, I'm pretty good on the show, at least about not exploring when it has annoyed me. What I'm most interested in is when I notice something just happened with the guest and they're now going somewhere and I want to clean that up. I want to clean that up immediately. It happened brilliantly or, or not brilliantly. The clearest example of it was I was uh, interviewing Machine Gun Kelly and he said, I'm from Cleveland. And I had, a, my arms tired. I had a, I had a smile this small, Ricky. Mind you, I'd already noticed from the second he walked in, he's been through a lot of shit. He, he is, he is hyper vigilant. He's like checking where are the doors and where are the windows and what's that thing? Okay. Like Jason Bourne? Yeah, but for real. And so I know what he is. I'm the same way. And so he says I'm from Cleveland and I go like this. That was the size of the smirk. And then he keeps talking with a sentence, but I detect now there was just a little tonal shift and he's marching on about Cleveland, but something happened. And I go, hey, something just happened. Um, did you happen to notice that I had like the tiniest grin when you said Cleveland? And he goes, yeah. Yeah. Why did you do that? And I go, because I too was in a town for only three years, but it was the only happy three years of my childhood. And I call that place home. And I was just laughing because I know you were only in Cleveland for three years, but that's home because that's where you found Machine Gun Kelly. That's where you created this thing that got you out of all of the madness. And so like, that's the kind of moment that I live for on the show and I can detect on the show mm -hmm. and I want to clean up right away. And in fact, that thing may lead to the best thing that happens on the show. My frustration comes from when, if I were to ask somebody, did you notice me smile? Or if I would say, hey, I noticed, like if Machine Gun Kelly didn't think to say, hey, I noticed you smile, why? Even though he was curious. Uh huh. If I ask that question and the person says, I don't know, that's where I am like, how could you not know? Yeah, so so either you have to pick, you have to be like, oh, okay. Well, they either, they I, be, they, I believe that at least they may not know. Yeah. And if they may not know, I also believe that, well, we could figure this out in 30 seconds. Oh, uh-huh, uh-huh. But if the person is, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah, That's yeah. what I was talking about. Yeah. And I, some people don't have an appetite for that and some do. Like that you and I that's why we're friends. We live for that. But but sometimes when it's when it's a it's a it's a close relationship. Yeah. If this is all the time, hey, why are you cracking your knuckles? Why did you want more coffee? Shut the fuck up. I uh, get that. Uh -huh. But sometimes cuz I I'm always curious and I'm I I think in a healthy way, I suppress a lot of my curiosity because I have an idea or it doesn't matter and it messes up the momentum. Yes. Even now as an example, I yeah. feel like it might be messing up you're, momentum. You, you recognize that like you're six standard deviations above the normal people with this. I'm it's, assuming. It's tough for me to refer to what normal is, but but I do know that-, that I, Baseline. I, we pull all of America. How much of your day spent I'm not present. <laughs> ruminating on other I'm not present anymore. 
if I'm thinking about it. I think other people are. So I don't know I'm if it's six steps ahead. Present. No, no. I just mean like if, if if the average person spends 20 minutes trying to figure out what just happened. In sure, a day, I'm spending two hours. And I think you're at, yeah, 120 minutes. Yeah. I think you have an awareness of that. So I think rightly so, you are self-policing. You're going, okay, I've now stepped into an area where it's like, it's not vital that I find this out and it's definitely annoying to them and I need to pump the brakes. The, the trick that I've, I've learned is, is uh, if I really want to know, go for it. And if not, sit on it for one minute. And if one minute goes by, where it gets difficult is when they're the little things that don't matter, but it it's a pattern of behavior or of communication uh -huh. where it's like, I'm not asking you right now about a smile on Cleveland. I'm asking about you make a smile like that twice a day yeah. and I don't understand what's happening. Right. I don't think you're doing anything wrong, yeah. but it, it makes, it takes like, what is this? Yeah. Could you help me figure this out? It doesn't matter, Rick. That's where I'm like. Right. Well, then you're, oh. yeah, you have a partner in that moment that, certainly isn't doing all they could do to comfort you or make you feel safe. And that's also fair for them to feel yep. that way. And they probably need another partner. Yeah. And these are all the realities. Also, this could be a, Earth. Of anybody. It could be a partner. It could be a friend. You know, yeah, not, yeah, yeah. Not I mean, I think this most rears its head up in like really intimate relationships. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and in friendships. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And some... And it's totally fine. I get it. If I was like, look, I, I don't, I don't think, I know you're allergic to the word normal. I don't think I'm normal. And I think that came with a bunch of gifts and I'm grateful for the gifts. So I'll take the, the, the other side of the coin. Um, but other people that are coasting through life without a ton of analysis or self introspection or here, that's, I genuinely, that's great too. I, I, I don't think there's a hierarchy. I, I sincerely, I'm not pandering. So it just might be that that's not the most ideal dynamic for two people. Kristen doesn't think that way. I've, I've said on this podcast numerous times and maybe even once when you were on, I don't remember. Yeah. Uh, it was back when I was dating Jackie and I was at your house. Gold, gold, and gold, gold. I don't remember what Kristen said, but Kristen commented something about your hair or a hat or something. I don't know what it was. Mm -hmm. Do you remember, know what I'm talking about? Mm -mm. And you said, uh, uh, it hurt your feelings. Okay. Um, and you said, hey, when you, I'm making up the variables here, but yeah, something yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. when you said that my head, blah, 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 were you saying because you don't like the hat or it doesn't fit me well? Are you saying uh, like, you don't think I look good? Whatever it was. Yeah. Kristen, whatever she said, had no idea it would make you feel that way. Right. And she said, I've told this before. I, I'm not watery eye, but almost damn. This was a big thing for me. <laughs> okay. She said, she acknowledged that, oh, I'm, I didn't mean it like that. I, I, I didn't, and I think you even said, cause it hurt my feelings. Uh huh. No, no, I didn't think that. I'm just saying that, you know, the hat has, there's a blah, 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 whatever the fuck. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you go, oh, okay. that's where you said, oh, okay, good. Because if it was this, it would have hurt my feelings. Right, right, right. Kristen uh, didn't analyze what the thing meant. She wouldn't have even thought too. Yeah. If you didn't, for, so you guys are two different ways. It's not on her to know how it's going to make you feel. Right. You, you, yes. But imagine mm. if you were to say, did you say this, this, this? And she goes, I don't know. Who cares? Yeah. Or stop it, being a baby. It took 20 seconds. Or stop being seconds. so sensitive. It took 20 seconds. And not only do you now understand what she meant in that moment, the biggest thing is the shorthand. Now, if three weeks from now, something happens with a hat and she says it, you're going to assume, oh, she might have just meant this. It's easier to it's give the benefit that of the doubt. Yeah. 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 So like- Asking these questions all the time could be draining for all parties, especially the person who's not as interested. Yeah. But you're building equity in seeing the other person. And that's what I meant about unseen. Yeah, totally. So then also she might say next time, hey, I don't like the hat on you because of blah, blah, blah. She'll give that extra sentence. Uh huh. Yes, yes. She'll so, she'll attempt to. Right. Yes. So she doesn't have to be the way that you are. In fact, correct. she's probably not going to be. Never. But if she mm. sees you as that thing, mm -hmm. you told me a story once about getting up. Uh, you got up to go get something, go to the bathroom. And Kristen said, will you bring me a glass of water? You remember this story? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, um, of course. I could tell yeah. it or yeah, you yeah, could. Yeah, or Yeah, yeah go ahead. Um, but what I took from it is uh, there's a few things. There's actually three that I can think of now that you've said that like, uh, or like, uh, oh, these are now tools in my belt. Yeah, yeah. Um, you didn't like, like, get me a glass of water. Like, yeah. what am I, your... What does that mean? I got it. Can I set it up differently? No. Well, yeah, it, it is course. a little different. 
Of course. Had I had gone into the kitchen, we were in the living room watching TV. Had I gone into the kitchen and I was making myself a glass of water and she had asked for a glass of water, there wouldn't have been an issue. Right. You were doing something else. We were both sitting on the couch and she said, will you get me a glass of water? Okay. Okay. So you're feeling what, I don't know if it's controlled or, or uh, 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 not respected, whatever it might be. Um, and the change was, and then correct me where I'm wrong, because this is where it was. The change was, wait a minute. Do I trust this person? Do I love this person? Do I want to care for this person? Yeah. If all of those things are true, then why don't I just do this thing? And and another thing was the perspective of you grew up very independent. Everyone does their own thing. In she, fact, how we showed each other love was, was to I don't never a be you. a drain on each right. other. We knew everything was stretched to the limit. So it was like, you just, you would never put anyone else out. You knew everyone was at the breaking point. Yeah. And that wasn't how she grew up. She, she grew, grew up, up in a house where love. you showed love through acts of service. Yeah. So like I had an opportunity to demonstrate how much I loved her, which weirdly for me was demonstrating how much she didn't love me. And if you guys didn't talk about that. <laughs> oh my God. Well, we would have never got here because yes, that's always going to be her love language and I've got to adapt. Yeah. And then weirdly to give you a state of progress on this, that was 17 years ago, that situation on the couch you're referencing. And we were at friend's house three weeks ago. I was in the bathroom. I'm completely unaware of this TikTok trend. I swear to God, I don't, I don't, I don't, TikTok, I don't know about it. I walk in from the bathroom out under the patio. There's about 10 of us out there. I sit in a chair. Kristen walks up to me and hands me an orange and says, will you peel this for me? And I grabbed the orange and I peeled it for her. And then I gave it back to her. Everyone started laughing. Eric goes, you owe me a hundred dollars. I'm like, what, <laughs> what just happened? And they go, oh, you know, there's this TikTok trend where you hand your partner an orange and tell them to peel it for you. And, you know, people, most people will go, why don't you peel it yourself? Or some people will say, sure, blah, 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 blah. And I said, well, that's funny because I don't eat oranges, not because I don't love them. I love oranges. I will never eat a fucking orange because I hate peeling them so much. But that's where we're at now. It's like, I took this orange, I wouldn't peel it for myself. Right. But I peeled it for her and I didn't say anything. And she couldn't even believe it. She had bet against me. She's like, he's going to definitely say, why don't, why don't you peel it yourself? And if my partner gave me something to do <laughs> for them, that you wanted help or something, that would make me feel so valuable. It would. Yeah. yeah. I would love I got to step over. My, <clears throat> my first thought was like, are you insane? You have longer nails. You nice. want the orange. And then I was like, just peel the orange. But I had to step over those thoughts. So you knowing that that's how she receives love and even shows love. Yeah probably makes you want to do it. I don't want to do it, Ricky. I do it because I love her and I want uh, her to feel love. But it has not grown. Well, is that a want? What's that? That's a want. You want her to feel love. That's I want her to feel love. Now, I don't want to do all these tasks that right. lead to that. I, I haven't like, I've accepted it all, but it doesn't mean that like I want to. I have yeah. to still have to force myself. I'm like, oh, I should go feed the dogs. They're not my dogs. I think she should. I don't even want these dogs. <laughs> but I'm like, she's really going to appreciate if I go. But but I don't want to. Right. In fact, I've got to like ramp myself up like I'm about to go work out in the garage to do something as menial as that that's not for me. I'm a selfish motherfucker. Yeah. I think like most of us are or lots of us are. Yeah. I but, barely want to do the shit I have to get done today. Yeah, but you do it. Yes, I do it. For the most part, I do. I'm sure I could improve still. But I will say that 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 orange thing was an incredible full circle from the glass of water. Because mm-hmm. I was like, this, what? Get, you want me to get up right now and go get you something you want? We're both enjoying it. My the- question, what if this wasn't a TikTok thing and there weren't friends around and she was just there, right? And mm-hmm. she said, uh, will you open this for me? And in your head, you felt... Well, one, I don't want to, but two, also like, why aren't you doing it? Mm-hmm. And you were to say to her, why do you want me to do it instead of you doing it? Is well, there an answer that she could give where you go, no, and there's an answer she could give you, you're like, okay, that makes sense, I'll do it. Well, what has happened over 17 years is not only in that moment you're talking about with the water, where I did say, all right, my fear in that moment, before I figured out the whole family stuff in the love language, was simply, we're newly dating I don't want to set a pattern where I run all her errands and I'm like her servant. That's not what I'm looking for in a partnership. So if I do this thing, then does does it happen tomorrow and then the next day and the next day? And I'm one of these people that like waits on their spouse. I'm not going to do that. Right. We have earned so much, as you said, capital that when she handed it to me, my assumption was there was some reason she couldn't 
uh, unwrap it. Mm. Uh, what do you call it? Unpeel. Uh, peel, peel it. Yeah. I don't know if she's working with oil paint. I don't know what she's doing, but I do trust at this point there has to be a good reason that she's too lazy to unpeel. The only way you get to that point is by being able to ask why, explain. A thousand percent. To a, maybe a draining amount at the beginning. Yes. So even if you're not that person that is that, that is curious like that, I think if you have two people that aren't mm. curious like that, then you don't get to. Well, but look, I also, I would resist the urge to think that the thing we need, everyone needs, because I don't think that's the case either. True. I think there are couples where the guy's like, he says something mildly vulnerable and she's like, stop being so sensitive. And he's like, eh, okay, fine. And they're right. fine. Not, right. They're not less happy than Chris and I are. And they might last as long as Chris and I are. I don't have an opinion on how everyone's working. I only know that for me, yeah. it's kind of a non-starter. If a, if a woman said to a me- non-starter being- If a woman said to me, you're being too sensitive, I would be like, then you're with the wrong dude. Yeah, I'm that's super so sensitive. Dismissive. That's I'm, so dismissive. I'm sensitive. I, I'm extremely sensitive, yeah. like more than most. Uh -huh. um, and I think it, I, it has to be annoying for Kristen, but like, like me- I don't think she so. She likes- all the other stuff that comes with that, she's done a cost right. benefit analysis into her, it's worth it. Similarly, she's got a lot of things that I, I you know, there's shit I would, I would X out in the lab if I made a copy of her. Um, but I'm certainly willing to deal with those to get all the incredible stuff she also is. Mm -hmm. If she did nothing else and then was the mother she is to our kids, I'd put up with almost anything. That's sweet. It's true. Like w once you have kids and you shift your primary obsession being that they're safe and happy, and then there's this person that makes them safe and happy nonstop, it's more powerful than them making you feel safe and happy. Will you talk more on mm -hmm. the, the, the acceptance of being selfish yet still sharing a life and, and caring for and either the compromise or negotiation? Yeah. I mean, I'm, a, I have a, I don't know if it's a it's an unpopular opinion. I, I feel like it's increasingly unpopular. I don't think we can do anything that's not selfish. Uh, that's just my point of view in the world. I think we are an animal trying to stay alive on planet Earth. I've said on this. I've said here that I think selfish. The word selfish has really bad PR. <laughs> yes, because of course, be selfish. Because I think people think if you're selfish or they admit they're selfish that they can't be moral and they can't be generous and they can't be all these things. But I would argue. That's not the case because for me, I am also writing a story about who Dax Shepard is at all times in my head. And the kind of person Dax wants to be is the kind not of person guy, that's- Except that he's a cool guy. In addition, <laughs> is generous, is thoughtful. Um, that's who I want to be. That's who I look at and I'm, I admire. So um, through my selfish desire to be a person I admire and like and respect personally, I end up doing a lot of things that are moral and generous and benevolent. So I don't think it's either. I just think the notion that you could actually have an impulse that originates with true selflessness, I find that hard. I find that hard to believe because when you chase it down, like I've been in these arguments with people, I'm like, well, but I want blank. Yeah, it's a old philosophy. You can like always question get of down to the bottom line. To it's like people. you had a desire for love. You had a desire for connection. You had a desire for connection. Um, and you you immediately know how to get that. It's through kindness and thoughtfulness yeah. and all these things. But the initial thing is like, I want to be loved, seen, understood, connected. Because I'm scared by myself <laughs> and alone. And I'm going to do things to make sure that doesn't happen. I don't think that's bad. Scared of what? I think all of us are, uh, the thing I, I, I said 10 minutes ago, of being alone in the world of not having community, of not having connection, of not being um, seen as existing on this planet and this short little ride we have. It's almost like we need other people to acknowledge it's it's happening. And without it, it's terrifying. How do you, do you have a lot of self-confidence? Yeah. And if somebody says, I remember you once said to me, if somebody says, you're not 6'2 or not 6'3. If they like, call me short. Yeah, you'd be like, well, that's not going to trigger you at all. Right. Um, so to be- but, but I am triggered by the criticisms that I in my heart believe I, I, I am bad right. at. So those things, Yeah. would you talk mention any of them? 
Um, I, I'm happy to report they're diminishing. Like uh, the trade off of getting less attractive is that like I'm older and I've been through more and I have whittled away at a lot of my character defects. And whoa, what's one that I still have? Um, let me say, I want to add this too. And I'm, I am five seconds into this, but my new year's resolution was to learn about Buddhism. <laughs> um, and I got three books and I've been reading them. And the thing I was reading last night that I found interesting is that the Buddha rejects the sense of I or me or being simply because your consciousness is a reaction to what you're seeing, smelling, tasting, what thoughts are in the air. And that that is like, ever changing as your context and your environment change. So to, to proclaim I'm an I, I'm this way, I'm that way is a little silly because you're constantly moving through different contexts mm -hmm. and you're responding differently and you're having different thoughts every context. So I'm just throwing it out there that I really like this idea that like even trying to say I am this way, it's like, well, I am this way currently talking to Ricky in his living room. And then later when my kids won't brush their teeth, there's probably going to be a different eye, you know? So, but you were in the context of you saying you want to be seen and validated. Yeah. You oh, are. I, I know there. I brought that up. I know I brought that up. We will have our six year anniversary next week for the podcast. Wow. Yeah. And it's been an interesting Fuck, really? journey. Yeah. I remember before, like when you were talking about starting it. Yeah. Six years. Isn't that wild? Ugh. Time's boogieing. Okay, so what are you saying? Six year anniversary coming up? Six year anniversary. And then a few years ago, I joined Spotify. And then coinciding with that was um, a significant amount of money that validated me in a huge way. Um, a level of guests that were validating oh. me in a huge way. Never got Arnold. Didn't get Arnold. It's good, it's good, it's good. It's good to not get everyone. Um, <laughs> And I got to this curious place where I came here to Hollywood in 95 in search of validation and money. And all of a sudden I had the things that I had been searching for. And I entered a tricky phase of like, well, what's the new motivation? Bro, <laughs> I have not had the, the money and success that you have had. And I have, that's where I've been for like the past five months. I think it's, I think it's weirdly relatable. Look, you don't have to be in show business. I think a lot of people, they think if I become manager of my office. Yeah, your why changes. Yes, and then you you get there and then you're like, okay, well, I need a, yeah, I need a new why. I need a new reason I'm doing this. Yeah. And I think you, with success, and no one really talks about this, nor who, no one should feel bad for it. But um, I think about Jeff Bezos and, and Elon Musk. It's like, they can't even fantasize about something. That's been, they've lost that. They traded that for all this other stuff because yeah. if they go like, I wish I had an island and they could have it in one second. That's why these two motherfuckers are both going to Mars. It's the only thing left. They already have the yacht and the I want to give a ridiculous analogy for that, just that part. Okay. I, 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 people like some of the stuff, like I used to play Diablo 2. It was one of my favorite games to play. Okay. And I loved it. And you play it. Was it a cowboy who shot? No, okay. no fucking way. Okay. No, sorry, I didn't mean to offend you. I did, and you would start, and then you go, and you would, and it was you could play online with other people, mm -hmm. and you would gain levels, you'd get new weapons, you would get stronger, you get new spells, you get new items, all these things. You get to a point, and you want to keep doing it, and you spend so much time, and then you get to a point where you're on level ninety nine, and you're just Schwarzenegger, yeah. and you're just you're just the man, yeah. and it feels great because you could go through these places and beat everybody and take the things and find the things that were hard to get, and there's these little side quests that you could finally do, and. And I would do it for a little bit and I would get to the point where it's like, I don't want to start over because I just put so much into this, yeah. but I have it all now. And I remember vividly as a kid being like, you know what? I have this thing and I, I thought of it as a trophy. I'm not going to get rid of this character. Here it is. I'll put it here and I'll start as instead of a barbarian, now I'll be a paladin or something Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'll try to do it again. But I wanted to start over because it's like wanting things is so fun. Uh, yes. It's Getting them is very rewarding. And then once that dopamine goes away and yeah. once it and becomes a, status quo, yeah, it's like, <laughs> so the why is the why to get to level 99 or is the why to, I guess, enjoy the journey, but like to play the game. Yeah. And I am now, I, I texted you a couple of weeks ago because I'm, I'm looking to buy a house and I can't quite afford the house that I want. Right. 
which is fun. Like, let me keep building, yeah, but yeah. I want the thing. Yeah. But when I, the feeling I'm having is I have a podcast that's doing pretty well. Yeah. I'm on a TV show at least for another season. Yeah. Stand up's been going well. I have three revenue streams. I'm feeling creatively fulfilled. My whole life since, you know, late teenager on was the art or being funny or just yeah. getting better at something. Yeah. And that's that's what mattered. Like, how do I make this funnier? How do I make this better? Yeah. And not that that matters less to me necessarily, but like, for what? Yeah. And I so much want a family and like, what's the point of having a house if you can't fill it? And what's the point of of making money if you can't spend it on your your people and doing yeah, stuff? Yeah. And, and it's made me, again, because I don't not appreciate this stuff because I do and I still yeah, love yeah. it so much, but like it really has... It's not to and, say you want it to go away. I don't want any of this to go away. But it's made me depressed. It's made me, I've been getting depressed. Like, it's like. Yeah. Yeah. Who, like, I have ads, multiple ads. all And it's like, that's what I was trying to get. But like, for what? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, well, I relate enormously. And then I'll I'll tell you this anecdote, which is, and it happened this summer. For absolutely no reason, which is very normal for me, I will go into a spell not based on any information I've received or any data. I'll just decide this whole thing's going away. This whole thing being success, money? Yeah, every, yes. Family? Yeah, the, the podcast is going to go away. Are you talking professional, personal, or Professional. Both? Right. The family, and let's be clear, and this is true. I'm not being saccharine or lying. 80% of my existence and my identity is actually my two kids and my wife. So this is just like the thing I am in uh, while they're at school and I'm not talking to Chris and this is where I'm living. Right. This is my professional life. For no reason, I just decided this summer, I am, this is going to end. I can feel it. It's all gonna well, it's going There's to crash. There's other it. huge shows now. Uh, this is all going away. And for the first time in a few years, I had to think about, oh, so I'm going to lose relevance. Like I go to this really fun party every year at Jimmy Kimmel's Fishing Lodge. It's so fun. And the people there are so interesting. There's CNN anchors. There's scientists. It's like, it's awesome. And at least one person I've interviewed will come up. And I feel so worthy of being there. Like I'm talking to a scientist, but he might say, oh, I listened to your Richard Dawkins or whatever. And I'll be like, oh, good. I feel like I, I, I deserve a seat at this table. And so once I started thinking about... Um, that everything was going away. And I was thinking, oh, I'm going to be irrelevant again. And wow, I thought we were post caring about that. Like I thought I already got filled up, realized it was empty, found a new reason I love doing it, which I did. I thought I was over that. And then all of a sudden I had to like really consider a world where no, no one really wants to talk to me. Um, I'm going to have to impose on people. Is that a fear or is that a, is, I think it's a reality. Fear. I think it's a fear. It is a fear because, of course, if I'm being logical and objective, I go, well, people always liked me before. Right. <laughs> like, I can get along with people and I'm fun to talk to. But I wasn't allowing that data point in, right? And so I actually, for the very first time in my life, at 48 years old, I called some people who I thought surely have gone through this themselves. Um, I think the one I could say out loud that he wouldn't mind is I was like, God, how does Sean White feel? that his life has been like, you do the Olympics, you win all the gold medals, you're on every single show, you generate all this money, and then for three and a half years, you just kind of disappear while you prepare for the next big spike. And I was like, he has to know what to do here. He has to have navigated this so many times that he has some answers. And I called him, and I never ask advice for people. It is one of my, still my one of my worst character defects. I, I I can't I can't humble myself enough to let you know I don't know the answer to something. So wait, what do you mean? What don't you know the answer? Well, for me to call you and say I need yeah, advice I, 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 would be I, 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 for me to admit I don't know everything. And if I don't know everything, then would expert. you even like me? <laughs> right. Yeah. So a that's a burden, dude. It, it was, but this was a great experiment. So I, I text him and say like, Hey, I would love your advice. We're not really close enough for me. Yeah. I've like hung out with him a few times and I really like him. Um, I say, I, I would love to have lunch with you and ask your advice on something. And so I went and he didn't give me a magic bullet, but what happened was we just 
bonded over that phenomena like what a bizarre world we've entered where you have these moments where everyone cares about you and then you're kind of away for a while and then something pops up and then you make a bunch of money and then you're not making money for two years like that experience is a very specific one and then just chatting with him about it and being honest about that I actually I'm going to admit to you I have fears of not being relevant I'm so embarrassed to say that but I have a fear of not that no one would look at me or see me and in sharing that with him I left feeling way better and I cared a lot less even though I didn't get like a magic sentence and then i i reached out to another few people that i actually thought when i was texting them they're not going to be able to relate to this they've just been on top of the world forever and they're not even going to be able to relate to this and both of those people were like i can't tell you how comforting it is to hear that you're going through this because mm -hmm. yes i've gone through this so many times and then it's not like yeah dude it's there's not a solution but there it's the human condition and it's okay for people that haven't gone through what you've gone through but still have that human need to be seen and wanted yeah what is this something that happens to people when they get great success or is this particular character trait of yours like you said just needing to like you moved out here to be validated not everybody yeah. has that same in intuition right so what about what you're saying with but, people but don't you think see i do though i do think it's really I do, th I do think it's, I think look, I watched this happen to my grandpa who worked at um, Wonder Bread Break Bakery for 40 years. When he retired, he just went into this enormous depression because he had an identity and he had peers that he dealt with and he had a reputation at the bakery. And then all of that was just gone. Like it can magically be gone. I want to tell you a feeling that I have and you tell me where it connects to this. Okay. Um, I because of the podcast now do shows that people come specifically to see me mm -hmm. and that's awesome. Yeah. Um, it's intimidating and a different feeling and still new to me. Yeah. Yeah. They well, if like, you bomb in front of strangers, that's fine. Yeah. If but you it's, bomb it's, in front of people that, that have a rooting for you, it's, let's it's, assume it's I'm, I'm going to do great both okay. times. Okay. Okay. The feeling of me doing great in front of people that came to see me feels good because like, all right, cool. Uh, the, uh, they didn't feel like they wasted their money. They, they bet still on the right horse. Me. Right. Yeah. Um, that is not the same feeling as going up in front of a bunch of people that don't know me. And winning which them is, over. I, 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 I love that. Yeah. So it's not like, oh, I'm irrelevant. They don't know me. I like going into a place. So like this idea of like, oh, if I went into Jimmy Kimmel's party and they had- But by the way, it's still approval. It's just- Absolutely. It's heightened approval because you had to earn it. But, but the point I'm making is if you go into Jimmy Kimmel's place and nobody saw your interview- you don't already have it. But isn't there still a thing where you're like, yes, 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 yes. I'm, and that's I'm constantly right? around people who have no idea who I am. And you, in the real you world. Feel bad. And I love it. Right. Because I go, oh, I've got no advantage right now. I just have to make them well, you smile do have advantage. based on. They don't on know it. You're good at this thing that they don't know you're good at. Well, that, that's true. But but what I'm saying is like, I have no built-in goodwill. Right. So if I'm going to make this gal behind the ticket counter at Delta Airlines laugh and smile. It's real. I'll have really earned it. So, and I live for it because I miss, I do get a lot of free excitement yeah. by just being there. Cut to you at the neighbor's balcony. But, right. Then cut to me at the woman who didn't know yeah. who I was. And that one didn't have an awning you were being <laughs> yeah, rained yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I didn't take the time to woo but her. But Dax, tell me the difference between you feeling like, oh, it's I'm up here and now it's going away. But then you get to live in that space. I know. I know. You're, you're so right. The, the, and again, on my best objective day and healthiest day, I remind myself I've always been having a great time. I was having a great time when I was broke and I was always enjoying interacting with people and getting them to smile and lighten up and have a novel experience. Like I've always loved that. The people have changed. They've been more gratifying for my ego, but the thing is still the same and I always had it and I'll always get to have it. It might change shapes. So on my good days, I can, I'm there. But I also have periods, months at a time, where I can't see that. Or if I can see it, I can't feel it. Maybe intellectually I can say it, but I actually can't internalize it emotionally. And now I'm in a phase where I can. Like I just and I just am. And I don't know why. I don't know. Like I said, none of these fears were brought on by bad news. It, I just it was all in my head because 
I grew up in a way that I was waiting for the shoe to drop a lot. And mm. I just have it in my mind that if things are good for a while, clearly something's going to break. It's just the nature of life. You've told me before the, the, an insecurity you had of like when you guys were before the podcast, before your podcast, when you and Kristen were out, people wanted to see Kristen. People cared about Kristen and you're just Kristen's husband. That's never been an insecurity of mine. What I had an insecurity about is her making more money than me. I don't mind at all. I, I've always liked if she's getting more of that kind of attention uh -huh. than I'm getting. What does her And I never more felt threatened mean? by her celebrity. Does that mean because a man is supposed to, like, is that a... Yes, that's like some vestigial, I'm a man, I should be providing. This is crazy. She's making four times as much as me. This is emasculating. I'm failing as a man. Huh. Um, that was my issue with her success. It was not her level of slow. She's still way more famous than me, and I don't care at all. I'm delighted that more people are going to ask her for a picture than me. Does that make you feel like you have something cool? Like, why are you delighted? Do you mean because you don't want it or you like that your partner has I don't that? have to deal with that level of attention. Right. You know, I, I, I don't desire to be Where's LeBron James walking through an airport. Where you, you said you want to be validated. Though. So there's a sweet spot where people, you get stopped every now well, and then, so but you're not bothered. It's obvious and it's gross, but it's the truth. Again, back to us being social primates obsessed with hierarchy. I want validation of people I admire and respect. Strangers, I don't know anything about them, so I don't know if there's some genius scientist that I can prove I'm smart to. There's like no, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But these people are like, you know, Jake Tapper from CNN, like this guy knows politics. So it's I might be able to get one nugget in where he's like, eh, he's not too dumb about this. You so, but they're strangers. Enough. I don't know them. I don't know what they're great at. I don't know how to what 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 lane I want to try to impress them on. So it's all to be in. You want this six fame and success. So you're invited to the tables you want to be at. So that I can get validated by the people who I admire. Right. Which is a terrible. And I, I try to transcend it. Um, yeah. and, and again, sometimes I'm good at it. Sometimes I'm not. There have also been moments where it's like. I have been liberated from that for months at a time. It feels so good, though. I've told when you this. When you're liberated from I, it? No. I mean, probably. I don't have it that much. Yeah. But I, I've said it from since since you. Like, yeah. I think the first time you came out, I don't know, like, you want to identify, you want to be a hot guy? Sure, I get that. But sexy. I've always seen, sexy. <laughs> I've always seen, I've said this too, I think you're one of the coolest guys in the world. I love it. It and makes I've, me so happy. And it makes me feel so validated that like you want to be friends with me and that you're <laughs> nice to me. And uh -huh. like people have sent me, sometimes you've mentioned, not even like you're like on the on the podcast, you, you've you mentioned me a few times. And oh, yeah. it's not like- And you I always say you're the funniest guy. You do or don't? I always do. Oh. Your name never comes up where I don't say he's doing the funniest show. I re I'm remembering it wrong, then I believe you. But the okay. way I remember it is I've heard you mention my name and there wasn't even anything that great attached to it. Uh -huh. It wasn't like, oh, you got to see Rick something. You've said nice stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying, just like when you're like, oh, I was actually talking to Rick Glassman about, and then that's it. You're having your conversation. It makes me feel like <laughs> so good. For a minute, right? That's the problem is it, 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 it it's just not permanent. That's <laughs> that's the hedonic treadmill. It's I, just I can't, can, I, 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 I want to brag about my enlightenment. Gold. No, Gold. it's it, it. I think, and I thank my mom for this. I think so highly of myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That when I hear <laughs> you say it, uh -huh. it's not just oh, Dax thinks I'm cool. It's like oh, Dax sees me this way too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah. it makes me feel closer to you. It, yeah. I'm sure there's an unhealthy version of this, but no, oh, fuck be it. Because a year later. I'm still remembering. I remember you said something cool about me on my podcast. Listen, on your I, podcast, I have it too, I, and I know the people. But so, so mine is Robert Downey Jr. Yeah. Right? It's I like just recommended uh, uh, um, uh, juror, uh, judge to my friend last oh, night. Oh, you did. He was like, "What if small town movies are good?" To my buddy uh, Brent Morin. Perfect. It and is I'm like, he had already seen it. I'm like, <laughs> you know what? A judge just popped in. Maybe because you were coming over. Yeah. But he's a dude, he's the dude, and I maybe I even told this on your podcast, but I have been having reoccurring dreams about him since I was 11 years old. I saw Weird Science. He dumped a Slurpee on someone's head. He wasn't even a nice guy in the movie. He had a really cool sweater on. I was just like, <laughs> that is the coolest guy I've ever seen on TV. And I had reoccurring dreams about him probably once a month from 11 years old till 30. My girlfriend, Brie, of nine years at the time, was so bored of hearing my RDJ stories when I'd wake up, the dream I had. And the dreams 
went the same every single time. I bump into him somehow. And within five minutes, he recognizes like we are the same type of dude and we become best friends. Mm -hmm. Same, same mm -hmm. story every time. So we get invited, Bree and I get invited over to Favreau's house as he's about to make Iron Man. We go over there for dinner. I had just made a movie with Favreau Zathura. So I'm in the family and we go over there and I get in the backyard and by God, Robert Downey Jr. is there and he's with his wife, Susan. And we spend an entire evening together. We have dinner. He does not give me one ounce of attention. I am like white noise. Nothing penetrates. I'm giving him my A game. There's nothing there. We leave. We're driving home. And Bree, <laughs> sweet Bree, <laughs> grabs my hand. She goes, I'm so sorry, honey. Oh. <laughs> and I go, I know. Huh? All those dreams. Nineteen I'm years. so sorry. And I go, yeah, yeah, that's a bummer. We drive home. A month later, I decide to go visit Favreau on set of Iron Man. I'm walking through this enormous soundstage. It's where they built the Spruce Goose. It's the biggest soundstage I've ever been in my life. And I'm walking, and it's kind of dark. And as I'm I'm walking, I see two people are walking at me. And then as they get closer, it's Robert Downey and his friend. And it, it would be insane that we wouldn't acknowledge each other. So we're getting closer. And then as I... I stick up my hand and I go, I'm Dax. We met at um, Favreau's uh, last month. And he goes, oh, I know you, Dax. You're the person that was getting all the attention that's normally mine. And I go, oh, well, I'm so sorry. And then it was an explosion <laughs> of everything that's always been in my dream. And we just were like by ourselves. And then... We hit it off so well wow. that like two weeks later, he invited me to his birthday party and I sat right next to him. We were like best buddies and it was the dream. And so I like, I have that. I have uh -huh. that with him. I'm never going to not let it fill me up in this right. weird way that probably isn't healthy, but I love it. And when he FaceTimes me, I don't ever get off and don't not think, yeah, wow, Robert Downey. Yeah. He likes that's me. Why, like, that's why I think that's, that we're, we're like, enjoy I think you can, the benefits you can make some room for that. Yeah. You yeah. can make some room in your life for that. I think if you're solely driven by that, you're just going to be unhappy. I don't have sure. a moral position on it. Yeah. It's just, I think you'll be unhappy. Yeah, but still But I think win. if you hold on to a few people, it's great. And I have a handful of people that I'm still blown away they like me. I have to, I mean, yeah, I have to imagine you do. You have everybody on your podcast. And mm -hmm. once people podcast with you, the odds are most of them are going to be like, oh, cool. Right, like they're going. A lot of like times it now. goes that way, and I and I and I love it. Um, but you know, you when you were just talking, it reminded me I had recently um, Dave Bird on Little Dicky. We still rolling? You're just making sure. And camera A, camera B, camera C, Numbies, Numbies, go going. Um, Little Dicky, yeah. I had on, and you you can't find a person who's been more validated by superstars, right? Especially like relative to how popular he is in America. This season, Brad Pitt was on his yeah. show. And Brad called him and said, can I be on your show? Wow. And I said to him, like, I'm watching your success. And I'm a fan. I love his show. I think he's incredible. And I'm so nervous for him. I'm like, where do you go? What's left? Like, Brad Pitt has called and asked if he could do your show. We're going to have to find another source of fuel in the tank here pretty soon because you're like topping out really quick. That's where I think this idea of like, were you saying like, yeah, but that dopamine only lasts for a week. Yeah. Versus, you know, I played this video game character in Diablo and now I have to start over. Instead of it leaving, it's it's a trophy. You're right. You're right. And it, you hold on to these yeah, things. I yeah, yeah. I still I played against LeBron James when I was 17. Yeah. Not that this is any part of an identity, despite <laughs> the fact that I talk about it once every other month, <laughs> sure, sure, sure. at least. But like it is still like it feels like I did this. Well, I'm friends. I it, I've been friends with this person. I made this project. It's it's really funny you'd bring up that aspect of it because what what truly helped me get over the whole it's gonna go away thing was the thought you're you're telling me right now which is i had to say to myself if it went away tomorrow it still was an incredible thing that happened yeah because i'll think if it fails it erases it like i think that's my disposition is to go like well that'll be chalked up as a failure and i had to go oh no matter what happens yes yeah. I'll have interviewed Obama. 
and I'll have gotten a great contract. And that all happens. Yeah. And it can't be taken from me. But it feels like it can be taken from me. And I got to remind myself, it's the trophy. It can't be taken from me. But it feels like it could be. Yeah. I, I connect more with it, it going away and not having as many opportunities to get more trophies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, once you have it. And I really, it feels like it also, I grew up playing games where you gain levels and you get attribute points and you get new weapons and new armor. Yeah. And it's like, even if I'm not wearing that anymore, like there is a sense of like, I sometimes with my podcast, um, which is, you know, not, it's, it's you know, whatever. Yeah. I'll, I'll go through all the thumb, I'll go through all the thumbnails. Like I'll have a th thumbnail and I'll just scroll through all the different episodes, all the different episodes in order. I'll do go to the playlist where it's just the podcast episodes because each one was a week of work yeah, and yeah, getting yeah. to know somebody or failing or being embarrassed. Um, <laughs> so many being embarrassed. And it's just like, it's a great feeling. Look what I did. It is when I look back and remember how embarrassed it's like looking back at an old relationship and how much it broke your heart. And like, you're not feeling that heartbreak anymore yeah. and you know like how heavy that was. Yeah. Look what I did. Yeah. You know? Well, I even think too, as you get older, you get better at recognizing a mid embarrassment. Like, oh, and we're going to remember this. I had a, mm -hmm. I had a show recently for the Formula One podcast I do. We went and took paid deal in Vegas to do it live. And where we were at was all drunk people who didn't know anything about Formula One, didn't know our podcast. And it was an unmitigated disaster. It was the roughest hour on a stage of my life. And so opposite of when I do armchair live shows. And it was miserable, miserable, miserable. And at about midway through, I was like, oh, we're going to remember every detail of this in a way that you just can't remember success. Is the embarrassment, uh, is, are you uncomfortable? God, yes. It's like, oh, this is a disaster. People are actually coming up on stage and, and touching us. And we've got a half hour to go. Like, I have to deliver another half hour because I've been paid to right. do this. Um, this is going to be a rough remaining yeah. half hour. And then like, and then looking at my friends and they're there. One of the guys, <laughs> Jethro, said I was having an out-of-body experience. Like, how do I get out of this situation? And how much longer will this go on? And I at least have been through it so many times like you were. It's like, I had the wherewithal to go like, our dinner tonight is going to be so fun because oh. we're going to be talking about everything that went wrong. And we're going so nice to talk about it and share it with weeks. somebody. Yes. It's like the difference between improv comedy and stand up or it's, me having or, or podcast having a guest. And yeah, I don't have a, a somebody. With a me. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. That's I, I, I wish you had that because it can. Make, I often think about that. Yeah. It can make the, the terrible ones. And again, I, I've been saying this a lot. Uh, recently on the podcast because Kristen did a show with the Groundlings and I was there and I saw these people I've known for 25 years and I was just getting very nostalgic. And then I was just acknowledging, I remember all of the failures and a few of the successes. The failures were so fun. When you'd collect your stupid props and then go off stage and you'd look at each other in the green room like, oh my God, that tanked. Uh -huh. There's a fun bomb there that just, you can't compete. It's, it, yeah, success isn't that. When we walk off stage and we killed, it'd be like great job. Like it just isn't. It isn't that. Like oh my god, we need each other right now. <laughs> so there was much. an episode of Undateable uh, where um, where uh, uh, we, for whatever reason, this this season we did a, a during our run through. They brought in an audience. I don't remember why. Maybe we were practicing to do it live or something. I don't remember. But for a multicam, they will show a, a pilot episode before the taping. So people meet the characters and stuff a little bit. The warm up guy will tell what's going on. But for this, there was no warm up guy because it was just a rehearsal and there was no previous episode. And also so many of these people are tourists. English isn't even their first language for some of them. Sure. So here are these people. They're virtually watching a street performance on the promenade. Yes. On vacation. Um, and uh, and they're not allowed to get up. Uh, and right, they're not right, allowed right, to, you know, have their foot. They're like, they have to be here. And we did this run through and it was, um, nobody, nobody knew what was going on. And it was bombing to the point of, we've all bombed. I know what a bomb is. So when I'm telling you this was bombing, yeah. it was very much some to this, the blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I don't like remember Olympic many level specifics. Bomb. It was so bad from the, we knew right away from the beginning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, by the way, after that moment, uh, that was, uh, we, we did it the week before. It was okay. We did it this week, the second one. And after that, Bill, uh, hey, Bill. Uh, Love you, Bill. Uh, Just talked about you recently on, on my show. He, we stopped doing it because it was so bad. Right. Uh, in the first, in the first or second scene, it was so bad. I could not stop laughing. Yeah. And, yeah. and <laughs> that's it, a sweet feeling. It, it's just, because 
<laughs> it was with us. And my buddy yes. David Finn and we were just like, and also David and I didn't have many lines. So it was, it was okay. We're more we're watching the train wreck <laughs> as we're part of it. Yes, yes, But it was, yes. I, I don't, I, it was one of the most I've ever laughed. I couldn't stop mm -hmm. because it was so bad and uncomfortable. Yeah. That was sharing it with friends. Yep. Having yep, yep, it in yep. a room alone with somebody or on stage and driving home alone. It's very helpful mm -hmm. to sit and feel that it is a completely different sport. But you must do you laugh to yourself in the car like, oh, my God. like, because because I've been embarrassed, pretty badly embarrassed and been by myself and found myself laughing with just myself. Uh, I think. I haven't had a, I, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, like it's, it's it, now, now when I'm bombing, I, I, I don't take it as much as my self worth. Yeah. So it doesn't, it's not, I'm so bad. It's yeah. I did bad or I didn't figure this out. So it doesn't affect me the same, Yeah. but no, but no, I would, I would go home and I wouldn't listen to music because I didn't deserve it <laughs> uh, because you need to think about this stuff so you could get something out of this. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I it was, uh, I've had some embarrassing <gasps> moments on this pod, which is only four and a half years where yeah. um, I what had are to, some and do you release those? Yeah. 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 I release them because and you I, keep in the part that you're like super embarrassed yeah. about. Yeah. Yeah, there was a moment, I've talked about this on the pod before, there was a moment, it was the second Adam Ray episode, number 40 maybe, um, where the first time he came on, I wanted to do bits and we didn't do enough, We I, whatever it was, mm -hmm. he wanted to do something, I wanted to have real talk, vice versa. Yeah. And then at the end we're like, we we got to do more. Why don't we come on and we'll do some bits? Let's uh -huh. just get so stoned. I think it was uh -huh. the first time I really did that, at least with a guest. Uh -huh. <laughs> One of the first times at least. So we came on, we got so stoned and we were la we laughed so much, and I'm watching the edit, and I was so embarrassed of myself that you thought all this was so funny. No, 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 I didn't think it was funny. It, I I remember the feeling vividly. I remember seeing me talking over him. I remember doing stuff that didn't work. I remember me. Not, I saw teenage Rick not. I saw teenage Rick trying. I to saw fit in, trying to fit in. Yeah, I didn't feel that way in the moment. Right, but I saw a version of me that I wasn't anymore. <laughs> yeah. I'm not that annoying anymore. I'm not this. I'm not. <laughs> you know, it's like I'm like. <laughs> I was so fucking embarrassed, uh, 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 and also uh, uh, I thought he was funny. All right, and I was uh, talking to my buddy who's helping me produce at the time, George. Mm -hmm. Shout out to George. Mm -hmm. Um, and he goes, "Dude, it's really really funny." Like he was validating, like. And I go, I can't, I can't put this out. Yeah. I was embarrassed that I didn't, I haven't grown the way I thought I had. Yeah. And he said, just trust me, trust me. I watched certain moments that were kind of funny. So I'm like, maybe I can make it like a, just a little like five, 10 minute thing. Yeah. He talked me into it and I ended up doing an intro. I used to do intros and I did an intro saying to the audience, some version of this. Also, I'm remembering, um, I was dating Betty at the time. And for whatever reason, that morning that I woke up, that because the episode is coming out in a couple of days, I wet my pants. Oh my goodness! As, <laughs> I don't. I wet my pants as a kid. Yeah. I don't. Wet my, I think I wet my pants. It didn't in, in smell bad. In bed, I woke up and I'm wet. Okay. It Could doesn't be sweat. It doesn't smell like pee. Yeah. But it's it's here. Uh, so I had to have peed my pants. It's, it's, yeah. I haven't. Peed we're my, in Vegas. What's that? If we're in Vegas and we got to make a bet on what happened, that's odds are. Odds are yeah. it's it's pee and I was well hydrated. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I remember waking up and like, <laughs> what the heck? And I told, I mean, Betty was next to me. This is so me. sweet. <laughs> what? Did Betty think this was the sweetest thing? Um, I don't, but she's so she accepting of everything. So yeah. probably I don't remember that particular moment. Yeah. But. I do remember waking up having had wet my bed mm -hmm. and I wasn't going to air this episode. Right. And then that's when George comes over and he goes, I'm telling you, it's funny. And I'm like, I don't know, man. Let me, if I'm going to do it, I have to like save face and say, hey, everybody, I want you to know, I know I, I was a little out of control. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I also just wet my bed. <laughs> you know, like yes. I was just so vulnerable. Yeah. And I did the intro. Um, I pissed my pants and I'm embarrassed. And I did the intro and I put it out. And people talk. It's it's one of my most well received episodes. Sure, 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 sure. And that's not to say that if it wasn't, it would make that much of a difference. But the point is that did something for me where it's like, if I'm going to do this every week and I'm planning on it, it's going to be very hard to curate this best version of myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, I am somebody who I guess wets his bed still sometimes. Yeah. And who is very annoying. Mm -hmm. And even though I know most people aren't going to see my full catalog, it's out there. Yeah. This is me during this two hours. 
Uh-huh. It, kind of like, I guess, what the Buddha thing you were saying is, but like, this isn't my special. This is capturing me when I'm sad, when my guest is in a rush, when whatever. Yeah. And it is, and you put it out. Um, well, and that you, was my very first episode. If you remember, my was very first Kristen episode was, it, was with Kristen, and it went terribly, and we fought the whole time, and it was not... I the do people remember. from the Samsung commercial. You didn't put it out first, though. I did. You did? Yeah. I mean, my instinct was to not put it out. Right. I had whatever I had. Like yeah, you guys were fighting right two before. Two or three days of thinking, we got to re-record it. And then I said to Kristen, you know, it's uh, it's 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 quite bad. We're, we're fighting the whole time and blah, blah, blah. And then she's like, I kind of like it because it feels more honest like sure we're in the samsung samsung commercials and that is a version of us but then also <laughs> when i want to go buy yarn at michael's and i don't want to do your stupid fucking podcast and you're controlling that's also a part of us yeah and then so i think mine started with a leap of faith in that way where it's like oh i'm not I, proud I, I, of how because i heard did it, it and i'm like i am so controlling yeah oh, but you are i know so that's is what it is i know but man i was i was I was put off by how I was responding to this fight. Did that change moving I forward? I think it did. It was really good for me to hear. Because that, of course, in my mind, it didn't sound like that. During it or did when you were listening? She says this to me. She has said this to me a Wait, lot. Wait, answer that question first. In your mind, while you were talking to her, you didn't see that way? Or even when Correct. you were listening to it? No, no. When I was talking to her, I didn't feel that way. And, and then, then when, when I was listened, listening, I was you like, saw it hey, yikes. Yeah. And now this is something it is related to what I was about to say, which is she has brought this up to me several times is like, cause she sees it happen with other people and she knows me very well. And she knows my intentions very well. And she said, you often do not acknowledge your six, two, and you have a deep voice and you got to kind of incorporate that a little bit more into how you're talking to people. Yes, it is true. Both of you are, are talking equally as passionate about this, but there's this enormous size difference that you're just willfully ignoring. And, and, and I'm sorry for you. You've got to bring it down about 30% just for it to be equal, just because of the size difference. I have found my cheat in that. And my best version is ordering at a restaurant, which isn't necessarily the size difference, but if, but it is me having a lot of questions, and a lot of demands yeah, or yeah, needs yeah, yeah. is, and I learned this from my mom is, is acknowledging it before something happens. I like when I order at a restaurant, I will almost always say, I want to let you know that I have, I'm really difficult with ordering. Yeah. Once I'm done ordering, I'll be easy. I'm a nice guy. I'll tip you great, but I apologize in advance. Yeah. 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 Be because, that's great. because, uh, something I've, I've learned. I is, did that at photo shoots. Oh, cause you, you have a lot of needs for photo shoots. I just, I'm at my most insecure getting my picture taken. I'm at my worst self and I'm least likely to try something crazy. And it's just bad. It's I'm at my worst. And I tell them right away, like, hey, I'm really insecure. I don't like getting my photo taken. I don't think the eye ever look good in a photo. And I am rough when I'm like this. And I and I apologize. And I don't think just by that be, that I told you this, I'm gonna be able to not be that way. Like I, I just But now their expectations of you have been instead of being filled in a blank, you filled them in. Yes. And they recognize it's coming from his insecurity because I just told them. That's the whole thing we were talking about, about the hat <laughs> and the water and the orange. It's all that. It's people assuming they know somebody's intention. Yeah. So when we could tell somebody our intention, not change who we're going to be. Right. But say, hey, listen, I get really aggressive when I play games. Yep. And as it's we not got about fights, you. Right. Um, and I'm not going to not be that way. Yes, because the worst thing is like someone would fill in the blanks and think that they've done something to bring out this side of me that is different than what they thought I was going to be. And I want to make it very clear, like yeah. you can't win with me if you're a photographer. <laughs> I mean, there's been a handful that I have, but Sam Jones, I can remember their names. Like it's just I, I am at my worst if I if I never and my intention is to never do a photo shoot again as long as I live. Sam Jones, a guy or girl? Sam Jones is a guy. He had a great interview show called Off Camera with Sam Jones. It was in black and white. I'm sure you've seen it. I don't know if I... Oh, yes, I have. It's really, really yeah. good. And he's a, you know, world-class photographer. There's a photographer I worked with recently. Her name is Sam. And I just... I'm same same way. I've also like, I'm not going to get a good picture. It is what it is. I'm okay with it because yeah. I have to be. Yeah. But I'm not confident. Uh, and she took these great pictures. And I uh -huh. just want to forget it. I'll put her Instagram handle up. My but. art on armchair expert is from Sam Jones. Nice. So like I'm going to be 60 and it'll be the same picture. Right. I took at 30 like Johnny Drama's headshot. <laughs> yes. Yes. But not because of my vantages because that was the only one I ever liked. And that's the only one I'm ever going to use. We were talking, I guess that is my vanity. We were talking about something. And I don't remember what it was. I think it was about... 
oh, right. You put out the episode um, and having shown who you really are, mm -hmm. it's like they saw it already. That's and how they it didn't run. You know, you tell yourself they're going to run. It's, we're back to the thing. Like, we're going to lose everyone. Right. I guess I didn't think of it that much more. It's, I'm embarrassed. But why are you embarrassed? Because they're going to run. I guess that's... Yeah, what's what's the uh, fallout of that? You know, what what are the consequences to, to, of to that? Me, to that me, I would be unappealing and unattractive in, in someone you don't like. My therapist keeps saying this yeah. thing to me. He's been saying it for two years. I've only been with him for two years. Um, and most of the time, it's too abstract for me. Uh, to comprehend but I, I do think he's distilled it down to a single thing which is he's like do you think you exist okay. do you exist yes and are you worthy of existing yeah or do you only exist if someone's giving you approval do you only exist if yeah. someone you know validates you can you just do you think you're worthy of existing without any of the bells and whistles and that's hard to believe, weirdly. I aspired to it. When I came into some self-awareness seven years ago, I always felt I existed, but I existed in ways that I didn't know that I did, for better and worse. Uh -huh. I found out that, oh, there's the, my existence is seen differently from other people than it is from me. <laughs> right. So there's more existence than I realized. Yeah. And I became shameful and embarrassed uh -huh. and worked on it and came out the other end awesome and better and great. <laughs> yeah, the greatest version possible yeah. of you. <laughs> and then to be reminded that, oops, I'm, it's happening again. Yeah. I'm not always this awesome, great. I'm seeing these moments. It's not just, it, it's, it's like, I don't want, I don't know if it's a trauma, but it's like, oh, I, I have that same embarrassment that I had once I realized. And then also like, but then at least, okay, Rick, get better. Uh huh. I've done that. I'm not better. Right. So I, um, in moments, my favorite moment of, um, the podcast last year, like the, the thing that blew me away the most is I was interviewing Rami Youssef. Do you know him from Rami? Mm hmm. He's such a special guy. I could not believe how special he was. And he said, I was saying, it's. I have a hard time. I'm watching your show. It's incredible. I'm so glad to be being exposed to what the Muslim experience is in the same way that I'm grateful to have Donald Glover expose me to the Black Atlanta experience. Like, it's so cool. And the Jews to talk can, about their shoulders. David, Larry David already thanked him for that. Um, but what? I, wait, a minute. I didn't know you'd had Larry on. I haven't. But he has exposed me through his oh, art gotcha. I yes, was to say. the Jewish experience. So I'm watching my first time ever kind of the Muslim comedic uh -huh. experience. And um, and I'm saying like the fact that you guys have to wash your feet and your hands and all this to go in. Like it's weird to me. You're so smart. And so and, that, and yet you can comply with something that seems to me a little crazy. And he said it is. he basically said it is crazy. But the point of it is the Arabic word for human, if you translate it to English, is forgetful like that our primary foundation is that we are forgetful and i was like that's fucking incredible and absolutely I like, right i feel like what makes so humans like, humans is their pattern recognition we we you you have some growth you are in using these tools and then all of a sudden you do something and you realize no i i'm not perfect ricky right, i'm human i'm still this thing yeah. and i have the same epiphany every three months and that mm -hmm. is the nature of like we are forgetful we yeah. forget the lessons we learn we learn these lessons we're certain we're going to incorporate them into our dna and that's that and it's not it's endless it's an endless fucking battle if you're sober every day you wake up and pray for a reprieve that day from this illness it's not permanent you have to remind yourself in the morning and everything is like that you know your growth is like that my growth is like that we're gonna constantly be reminded of the same thing and it's maddening, but it is that is how it is. Well, the podcast has helped me accept that because because I'm not going to redo this. I'm putting uh, this this happened. I'm putting this out. Right. This is part of me, and it has made it easier to accept because when it's, when you're so embarrassed, when I'm so embarrassed about something, what I've learned is once you put it out, and then I'm on the next episode, whatever. I could still be a, some residual embarrassment. It could come back up, but like. It feels so heavy because I'm going to show this to people. This is private. Well, and the pain is hiding it. So the weird magic is by 
putting it out there, you actually then get beyond it a lot quicker than if you just hit it for the right. rest of your life. Right. Because like if that episode was just somehow still sitting on yeah. a hard drive, you wouldn't have processed it and been past it. It's almost like self-acceptance by throwing it out there. Yes. It's like, well, it's there, so accept it or don't. Yes. I can't go back. Yeah. Um, so there's been many moments since then that I've been embarrassed. And it's just like, that's just the nature of the beast. And again, I think that's like kind of what the, the getting older is and, and like gaining some wisdom in life is just like, as you're now in these situations, you've already survived them many times and they do get easier and easier for the most part. I used to get terrified of getting throat cultures, uh, the stick down the throat. Yeah. And I still do. Uh -huh. But there were about five times in a row where I had it done where I remember, it took me like the fourth or fifth time where I remember, because I said, oh, that's not that, that wasn't that bad. Uh -huh. And I remember, wait a minute, I felt it wasn't that bad the past few. I didn't recognize it. <laughs> right. And then I went in one, Rick, I'm, I'm terrified. I'm sitting on my hands. I say, give me one, two, three, and don't go on two. You're not tricking anybody. I, I just I just want this. Yeah. But I, I made myself somehow believe it's going to be bad until it happens. It's not that bad. And now I go into the throat culture and I still get scared, but I'm, I've done it enough. You can fast forward. Yeah, where it's like, it's not going to be that bad. Right. Um, you play it forward. What, why did I say that? What did you say that made me think of that? That oh, as you, you're you going through life enough. and you kind of yeah. Yeah, walk through so many different things, you start to believe, yes, this will be yet another thing I walk through and survive. I'll be alive after, at the end of this. Yeah, and those embarrassing moments of, like you said, you could laugh at it now or you know it'll be a good dinner. Yes. I also now, uh, um, uh, uh, we could wrap it up, but there's this, I've wanted to tell this Brad Pitt story oh, yes, for please. for a long time. And I told it on the Tom Segura episode because I don't know if you know him or what his I relationship is. I weirdly just met him for the first time in Austin this year at Formula One. He, Brad Great Pitt, guy. I will, I Brad Pitt came to his stand-up show because he's a fan of his. Okay. And he told this story. And I told the story and I cut it out. Okay. Um, and my Because it felt like you weren't allowed to tell Tom's story? No, 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 no. I told Tom this my story of uh, Brad uh, and okay, I cut great, it out. Great. Two reasons. One, it was at the end of the episode and you know, I don't know how engaged everyone is anymore. It's like, let's call this. Yeah. Um, and I felt insecure about that. I also felt insecure because I don't know if I'm not supposed to tell this story. <laughs> right, right, I'm right. I'm sure it's fine. I have fantasized. I have fantasized about if Brad Pitt ever saw me, he wouldn't know who I was. But if I said, I'm the Where's Ryan guy, I truly believe he would hug me. Uh huh. And I fantasize about be doing late night when he's the first guest and I'm performing or the second guest or something. Yes. And where I could be like, hey, could we? Yeah. <laughs> so I feel like he'd be okay with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I also like it's it's a long. Can I, can I uh, assure, uh, assuage your fears? So yeah. I came to oh, know strong. him and it was going pretty well. And at a certain point, I felt obligated to say, you should know I've been on Ellen. I've probably done six segments on Ellen about how obsessed I am with you. And I have an oil painting that she made for me in my garage of you. <laughs> and like, I think it's best you know this and don't discover this on a rerun of Ellen someday. And he didn't give a fuck. So, and then I was hosting Ellen she was out of town and they had a surprise clip for me and my worst fears came true. The clip was she had just interviewed Brad Pitt and she said to him, do you know Dak Shepard is quite obsessed with you? And then they cut to a video package of me doing every insane thing about uh -huh. Brad Pitt imaginable. And I'm guest hosting. So I'm now like, oh my God, oh my God, this is all over. We're never going to be friends again. They come out of the clip and he goes, well, I have to tell you something about Dak Shepard. I have a pretty big crush on him. Wait, how is this your worst fear? My worst fear is that Brad Pitt, this guy I'm trying to become friends with, saw that I'm super obsessed with him and now saw the video fucking example oh, of it yeah, and yeah. just saw how insane I am. And he's going to see this video package and he's going to come out of it and be rightly afraid of me as a friend. Is and his on, response is, was... Is he on with you? I'm sorry I'm not visualizing this right. Right, so I'm... I'm Ellen is gone. <clears throat> I'm the host that day. Right. They have planned a surprise for me. They're going to videotape me watching this surprise. The surprise was her interviewing Brad. It hadn't aired yet. Right. And she shows him all of the Got embarrassing it. things I've done. 
And I'm now, they're filming me and I'm now like, this is over. This friendship we're building is it ended right there. And then when they come out of the clip, he says to her, well, I have to tell you something about Dak Shepard. I happen to have a huge crush on him. So what I'm telling you is he loved it. Uh -huh. It was successful. So your fear of telling your story, I'm giving you a hard example that he has, he's just fine with that. Well, this story involves a guy with a gun saying, don't talk about this, <laughs> his bodyguard. Okay. What, tell me, tell me the story. Um, okay. So 2012. Yeah, you you can't tell this story. Well, what were we just so we could close and we're back? <laughs> we gonna land the plane, uh, and that's the Brad Pitt story. Oh my God, can't believe that happened to you. Yeah, we might have to bleep some of it. Yeah, 2012. Yeah, had we met yet? I, we did. We did hit and run in 2012. That's the only reason I even remember that year. Uh, Are you you're good at remembering years? I'm terrible. I'm I'm good at remembering what I was thinking in a moment, and I know, like I I remember that moment was I needed the money, and yeah. I book I know what commercial I booked the next month. Yeah. Um. So it was uh it was three months before I auditioned for Undateable. Oh wow. Um. So I remember the year from that. You basically took your scariest worst job within months of getting your best job. Yeah, but at the time that was my highest paying job. <laughs> the, the prank. The, the Brad Pitt thing. Uh per minute yeah. was by far the highest paying sure, job I, sure, I had sure, up sure. to that point. Sure. But it is radical how completely different your life can be within three months here. Yeah. There's no one like they installed a muffler at Jiffy Lube on Wednesday. And then on Thursday, they own six Jiffy Lubes. No, there is not. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there is not. It's uh, but I, I would argue that it wasn't because of the Brad Pitt thing that I got the, the uh, they job. seem kind of unrelated. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Unless he's like, hey, listen, Bill Lawrence, there's this guy. Yes, but very little connective tissue. You got to see him. Um, I love you, Ricky. Love you too. Oh, there was one thing I said I want to talk about that I didn't. Okay. The bathroom. Oh, your 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 plunger being covered with a plastic bag. You leaving the room if somebody uses the bathroom. Yes. You say. Would you like me to leave the room or do you just leave the room? Like someone will arrive and we'll know they came from Santa Monica and we go, do you need to use the bathroom? We step out. There's no door. If it's in the middle of the episode. If it's in the middle of the episode, they go, oh my God, um, can we stop to, so I can pee? And we go, yeah, yeah, no problem. We'll step out. Gotcha. And then occasionally they'll, they'll say, you don't have to step out. Or what was really fun was um, uh, just in December, I was interviewing Paul Giamani by myself. Monica was at home for some family stuff. And it was just Paul and I in the attic and then Rob in the corner. So he had to pee, I think twice, but we just, I kept the interview going. And so, and that's in, you can hear him yelling from the bathroom. And that was really fun. Big Paul Giamatti fan. And the Astra goes to? Paul Giamatti. Stop the music, stop the music, stop the music. Stop the music. Thank you, we're gonna just cut up real quick. I, I'll accept it. Wow, this is incredible. Thank you so much. Thank you, nice to meet you both. Congratulations, you both look beautiful. I first uh, saw Paul Giamatti in Win Win, and I thought he was fantastic in it. And I just wanted to say, if Paul Gio Giamatti is watching, I'm a huge fan, and I would love for you to do my podcast. For real, <laughs> Greta would, would love it. As well, Paul Giamatti, Paul Giamatti, Paul Giamatti, Paul Giamatti, just the women, Paul Giamatti, Paul. Giomatti, okay, Paul. Yo, 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 yo. Paul Giomatti is it? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't. I, you know. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, fuck artificial intelligence. And now, please give it up for the vice chair of the Hollywood Creative Alliance. Oh my God, what a beast! Did you see that holdovers? No. Okay, I probably will. I I, I probably will this week. It's so comforting. It's so nostalgic. 
It's like you certain you're watching a movie from the 70s. Yeah, that is the next movie I'm watching. And he is the kind of guy we argued. I was saying he, he was he's like uh, refuting the idea that he's a star, that he's not like he's not a star. Oh, is that false humility to you? Or no, do you think he believes I think he believes that. And then my pushback was, well, let me tell you how I divine a movie star. And I then I think hopefully you'll agree why I assess you as being one is to me, a movie star isn't like about being tall or handsome. So disrespectful. It's about, <laughs> can I watch this? Do I want to watch this person walk down a street indefinitely? I think of um, De Niro and Casino. There is so much footage of him walking down the street. And I'm like, keep walking. Mm -hmm. uh, Clooney in the back of the car and Michael Clayton. It's just this wonder of him driving well. in a cab and it goes on forever. And I wish it kept going. I could just watch him ride in a cab. And in this movie, the holdovers, I'm like, if there had been a three hour chunk of the movie with you smoking cigarettes and drinking in your shitty little room at, at that college, I would have watched all three hours. That's a movie star. I'm going to watch it tonight. You and I, you put us in a close up for, it's not maybe on a great day, you're going to get four or five minutes out of well, it. Well, you know, I don't know. Things have been, I've been really figuring it what out. What are those trophies? Um, <laughs> from the, I don't know if you know what the HCA awards are, but it's, uh, uh, I'm more just, I don't to, know why it. it's Rick Glassman. <laughs> What is this? What, what are we celebrating? Bob Barker? <laughs> oh, thank you so much. It took me this long to notice how many trophies you have right next to you. And I just imagine you tripping at some point in here at night and like you panicking about all these trophies getting knocked over. <laughs> yeah. It's, Does it's that a, ever happen? It's a big fear of mine. Yeah. It hasn't. Also, I don't know if you've noticed a gift that I gave you last time you were on here and it's now not on camera, but it is right up here. That's up there. Do you see it? Oh, oh, oh the, well, the Kristen Bell thing? Yeah. I am basically gifting you something yeah. and it's yours. Okay. Without unless you give permission to give it to me. Okay. Okay. So okay. go ahead and open it and okay. uh, you're you, yeah. you know, it's fine. Okay. I could Could I have this? <laughs> you can show it to camera unless you don't want to. If that's oh, yours, of it's course. yours. Um I, I'm curious when this was taken. I don't recall her doing a nude shoot. Is this her or is that her face? That's that's her. Yeah, yeah. I thought you were talking about the basketball trophies. Well, that, I have that. Those are all my trophies. <laughs> oh, and then she <laughs> is one of them. Dear Rick, you have the best buns in the business. You were. Uh, 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 I did it as a joke when she came on because I found that picture and I'm like, "Is this really your autograph?" And she said, "No." Uh, so she signed it. <laughs> and then I wanted to like put it up for a minute. Yeah. But before I could, when you were, I don't know if you remember, when you were on, I gave it to you as a gift, and I said, "This is either for you or if you'll let me have it." And you and I, you signed off on it. I let you have it. But I still like, I don't need to keep it on camera, but it's it feels like it's part of the podcast universe now. It's pretty great. Her boobs look enormous in that picture. I wonder if she was breastfeeding or something. She referred to herself as scantily clad, I remember. She's nude, right? Um, she, yeah. That's more than scantily. She's not clad. There's no cladding. I don't know what clad means. I, did, I don't know that I saying. I think of but clad I, as like the side of a housing that's cladding, scantily clad, so not fully clad. Since she said that, I've never heard that term. And now <laughs> when people are naked I uh, or talk about naked, I sometimes think like scantily clad. Yeah. But I don't know that she used it correctly because I think that means that implies some cladding, scantily clad. I still don't understand what cladding means. Should we look it up? Yeah, we'll, we'll end on clad. Okay, let's find out. Let's see if we we'll get dueling definitions. Clad definition. Scantily clad. Clothed. They were clad in t-shirts and shorts. So scantily provided means not with, very clothed. Oh, here we go, though. Provided with cladding. Copper clad boards. That's kind of what I was thinking of. Yeah, but scantily would mean not very clothed. Right, but some clothes. Scan scant is, up, is minimal. Right, she's minimal covering her clothing. There's no, I hate to be pedantic. There's no clothing. So it can't be a minimal amount of clothing if there's none. Okay. Agree to agree. Yeah. Fuck it, she's Can we idiot. agree to agree? <laughs> <laughs> she was wrong and I'm going to take the episode down. <laughs> When I get home, I'll address this with her. All right. I don't want her out on the town representing the two of us and saying scantily clad. Representing There's both no of us? Cladding. Um, all right, dude. Well, as you always know. Let, let me ask you this. If you were bare naked on a beach, would you say to me, I was barely clothed? Poetically, you could you could say that, yeah. 
You would never say I was barely, you weren't barely clothed. There's no clothing. Clad and clothing are different to me. Clad to me, Not based on the definition. Not Google. Okay. I understand what you're saying. I'd hate to end in a fight. I understand what you're saying. Um, Although we started with a fight, so maybe it's appropriate. You know who would be scantily it. clad? Who? Um, I don't know what we kept in about that story, but my friend who was wearing a garbage bag hoodie, but his penis was out. I sign off on that all day. Okay. Yeah. There's some, there's scant amount of, Right, Close. but it wasn't covering what needed to be covered. Right. Or it was. And with that, I say, Dax, thank you for coming on for your third appearance. I look forward to the fourth. Me too. Um, dude, it's so cool that you come over and you do this. Oh, I love it. I always say it, and I watch your clips of your podcast, and I go, oh, he's much funnier than me. What is do you, you identify as a funny person? You don't identify as a funny person anymore? Because you said like when I have comedians on and stuff. Oh, no, I do. I do. I think I'm a comedian. In oh. fact, I fucking hate stand-ups who refuse to acknowledge that sketch comedy performers are comedians as well. I've had this Jerry Seinfeld's got to stick up his ass about this. I've had this conversation. The word comedian doesn't just mean stand-up comedian to me. Will Ferrell is a comedian. Oh, my God. He's one of the best we've ever had. I think the gray area would be comic. Bill, Bill, Bill Murray's not a comedian? Yeah, he is. He's, 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 he's not the a ultimate comic. comedian. He's not a stand-up comedian, yeah. but that's why we had stand-up before comedian. I've had this. Um, but a lot of stand-ups feel this way, don't you think? Uh, I can't say all of them, but I don't remember one stand-up comedian that agreed with me. Right. Because it's comedy. They wanna, they they're wanna, doing comedy. They're, they're a comedian. That's right. They're doing a version of comedy, which is stand-up comedy. I don't know if you heard me say this, but I think that gray area is, if you refer to yourself as a comic, I could see, oh, I would maybe. never call myself a comic. I'd call myself a comedian, and I am a comedian, yeah. and I performed sketch comedy, yeah. and I've done, well, I also, no, I could say I'm a comic. I did stand-up for two years. I, I don't know why I'm forgetting that. But I still don't, I, I certainly identify more as a sketch comedian. C comedic actors, not even just live shows. If Yeah. They're comedians. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that... Had Will Ferrell never done sketch, he's still... The funniest person. Vince Vaughn. That's the perfect example. I don't think he's ever done any sketch he or did host stand a, He did host a stand-up special once. He did a whole tour. The Vince Vaughn comedy tour. But, but prior to that yeah. Wild Wild West tour, just coming out of Wedding Crashers, we could say he's a comedian. Oh, dude, I know we're ending, but please, you didn't tell me. Give the shortest version. How are you friends with Arnold? Oh, um, I wish I could tell you the short version, but... um. And weirdly enough, I just, my last Kimmel, which was like a month ago, I virtually crammed all of my stories into like an eight minute segment about him, which was um, Tom Arnold called me one day, buddy, you want to go ride with the governor? And I'm like, yes. Meet at a gas station, 6 a.m. on motorcycles. It's Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's, um, oh my God, the uh, director of Avatar, Jim Cameron. Jim Cameron. Uh, it is um, the greatest. Oh, this is his friends from, from True Lies. Tom Arnold's friends. Yeah. Plus Stan Winston, the or that's a jeweler. Um, Harry Win no, Harry Winston's a jeweler. Stan Winston is like he created E.T. and all the most famous little creatures in movies. He's like the best, you know, he's the George Lucas of that world. Uh -huh. And then Tom Arnold and me and maybe a couple other dudes. Um riding motorcycles. Riding motorcycles up the coast. Then we go have breakfast at uh this restaurant up in Mulholland. First time you met Arnold? First time I ever met him. Um the punchline of that story is uh, we're at the breakfast. I go to the bathroom. When I come back from the bathroom, he goes, <clears throat> Dax, you know, I've seen the punk and I've seen the without a paddle. You're hilarious. And I was like, oh, my God, because at that moment, all I had been in was punk and without a paddle. So I'm like, I can't believe Schwarzenegger has seen both those things. We go outside. We're about to get on our motorcycles. And, and I, I say to Tom happening. Arnold, I'm like, can you believe fucking Schwarzenegger seen my stuff? He goes, buddy, as soon as you went to the bathroom, he's like, who the fuck is this guy? Yeah. And then Tom told him that. Then three weeks later, I did my impersonation of him at this breakfast. Very bold. Again, you guys are riding again? Same trip. First initial trip. I do my impersonation of Schwarzenegger to his face at the breakfast. Three weeks later, I get a call on my phone. Hello, is this Dak Shepard? Yes. Will you please hold for the governor? And I'm like, yeah. He gets on the phone. He's like, Dax, listen, I had a really great time riding motorcycles with you. I have a lot of events coming up. I think it'd be great if you came out on stage and introduced me and did the impersonation and uh, we could have a lot of fun. Are you uh, available to do that? And I go, um, I would love to do that, but you're a Republican and I imagine these are fundraisers. I go, I'm a, I'm a libertarian. At the time I was a libertarian. I'm not now. I go, I'm a libertarian, so I, I don't think I could really do that. And he goes, me too.
<laughs> and then I go, okay, I'll do it. And then many times I would just go him, to these just events. Just lying to you? Who knows? Maybe. Was, was, en- was enough for it you. It didn't matter. I'm like, what am I doing? I'm right. not like, right, right, I'm, right, right. I'm afraid to raise money for the Republican Party. And it wasn't even that. It was more like just he'd had to make a lot of appearances as the governor. And I many times would go on stage and kind of mini roast him. He'd come out on stage and I got to have lots of lunches with him and, and breakfasts. And then he asked me to roast him one time to raise money, which I did. I read from Education of a Bodybuilder, his book from 1978. And um, yeah, went and saw a movie at his house. He invited me to movie night one night and he was in a, um, a robe with his name on it. And uh, he fell asleep during the whole movie. And then he woke <laughs> up right as the credits were coming up and he turned around and he's like, that was a great movie. <laughs> I love that. It was what I was like, oh my God, he's a dad. He's just a dad. He was such a dad move to sleep through the entire movie and then wake up and act like he had seen That's it. That's surreal, man. Yeah. So I had a little period for four or five years where I saw him quite a bit and I was, um, yeah, I know Catherine really well who ended up marrying Chris Pratt. Uh, right. Yeah. That's my sports thing. And then I, I couldn't get him on my podcast to promote this book yeah i really think one of the reasons he came on mine was because i sent a video of how much of a fan i was and he knew there were i don't know if video matters but maybe if you had that but i made a video because um uh, uh i but do I you think be, i mean we're mildly friends if i got a video from you telling me that you're a fan of maybe mine. i'm saying maybe if you sent a video <laughs> right but I'm, I'm let's role play for a second not that i'm a fan of yours your video would be custom to oh, yours okay like It'd just I, be a video going a like- A personalized invitation. What are you doing? Why aren't you coming on my podcast? I think less uh, less accusatory and more <laughs> what you want. Can I tell you my ultimate fantasy? Like, like p- part of me, of course, wanted him on the show just for my our podcast. They're like, it'd be great for our podcast. Right. And I know him, so I think it'd be really fun. My bigger motivation, if I'm being honest, is I have this stupid thing with the my garage where I work out. I call it Black Mold Paradise because The Rock calls his gym Iron Paradise. And mine has mold growing and Dwayne. it's disgusting. And it's also called Dan Gaines Beef Hoss. It's got multiple names and it's all... I got neon signs inside and I got like lettering on the wall. And I was like, I want to do at least 10 reps mm-hmm. with Schwarzenegger before I die. Really, I want him to come on the podcast just so we could Buddy, lift th- before... There's your video. There's your video. Okay. You're in there saying what I want. You know, you keep it to 90 seconds. Yeah. And you say, we do that episode. By the way, if you end up getting here after some reps and you don't want to record, don't, no obligation. I just want to, this is what I want. I want to share 10 reps with him before I die in Black Mold Paradise. That's the real goal. You know, this was a little, we we're having some fun and I was like, oh, here's what you need to do. But yeah. now I mean this. <laughs> I think you make, actually. Make that video. This is very persuasive. And I think I might. I don't know that I know how to get the video. Anymore. <laughs> I don't have agents. We'll post it on the internet and just pray. I don't have agents, but I used to, my, my agent that I used to have. Could get things to people. Is Arnold's agent. Ah. And I think he might be Kristen's agent. I don't know if it matters bleeping the name. No. Her agent. But she's Love with him. CAA, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, he's there. Okay. Get him with the video. Okay. And if you need somebody to film it, because I'm buddies with him kind of now, um, I would love to direct you guys uh, some type of music video of you guys working out. Oh, if he does arrive. Because you're now doing... When? (laughs) Okay, so when he arrives, you will make a music video. What song immediately pops into your mind? There's only one song, and it's Karate Kid's... Well, I don't know. It's in Karate Kid, but you're the best. Which I put in the first movie I made, uh, Brothers Justice. Oh, really? You're the best around. Yeah. Nothing's ever gone. That's a great pick. Yeah. I'm glad you stepped over Eye of the Tiger to get there. Well, two reasons. One, uh, that's already a workout song, not a being a champion song to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. So that's not. And two, um, that's sly and that doesn't fly. Can I pitch you something a little counterintuitive? Just the two of us. Yeah, that's you want that. We that's can because- make it if we try. And you want that because you want to be close to him, but that's not what and then people maybe want to see. One high five and you and I right at that moment that in the freeze frame. Work. That could work. Maybe we make a couple different options. Nothing's going to ever keep me down. You're the best around. And then, and you get the bicep shot. That's incredible. Shout out to Carl Weathers, by the way. Do you know that in that movie, in real life, I went on talk shows and did karate demonstrations to that song and the host didn't know what I was doing because I needed footage for my movie. The first movie I made, Brothers Justice, is about me leaving comedy to go into martial arts films. 
And in real life, I, I went everywhere in a karate gi. I hosted, oh, I didn't host, great. I presented at the Teen Choice Awards As in my karate outfit. As if it were outfit. real? Yes. I went on Carson Daly's late night talk show to do a karate demonstration. And I kicked through a poster of um, <laughs> of Chuck Norris. And uh -huh. then I challenged Chuck Norris to a fight at Arby's on the show. This was all when I was young and very hungry and very on fire for all this. And the things I did for that stupid yeah. mockumentary... But, but that song was key. I think I had to have seen this. So maybe you're even, the video you're pitching me is somehow in the back of your mind, you've already seen it and right. it was what's in that movie. Very well maybe. It did, that's, you said <laughs> that what song, that came right away. <laughs> all right, I'm going to get a Polaroid and then I'll let you go. All right, I love, love you, you, buddy. Theme music. Scoot doo, blabbity blue, scoop 